Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trader's Lab. I am your host, Tom B. Could I confirm that we have sound on B2 and also in YouTube? All right, thank you. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice or recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. This is for educational purposes only. And this is not a trade calling room, so please follow your own trade plan. Uh, the goal here is to show auction market theory using the tools of volume profile, which represents volume and price, and also market generated structures uh, to initiate. Uh, and interact with the market in multiple time frames. Today is very interesting. Uh, we started out uh, on the long side this morning and uh, we're enjoying that immensely until we had a change in behavior in the market and then we turn around and got short. Uh, those of you who are looking at the market this morning, basically we opened up uh, on the edge of yesterday's range outside of what's called value uh, and that was saying there was an imbalance in the market now we have statistics that suggest the potential for the overnight stat now that's ETH higher low getting taken out during the RTH session and considering we were reasonably close close and we were outside of the previous previous day's value that suggested to me that uh, we had the potential to continue to squeeze higher in addition in the eth session at the time the low had tested the developing value area high of the previous day so that was suggesting at the time that the market was not accepting yesterday's balanced day and it was going to check higher well that ultimately failed we did not get to the overnight high uh, however and this is something that's interesting if you were here in uh, the traders lab yesterday we were trading in something called balance or mean reversion and that meant outside in outside in so that was the configuration earlier today so that mean reversion base and the way you can tell balance is kind of like a big belly in the middle and thin edges on both sides and typically what you'll have is the volume point of control which is what's considered the fairest price in the middle and the midpoint and often the VWAP aligned and right on top of each other and that's kind of a neutral configuration in the sense that it's the balance is suggesting both sides are active and it's a battle taking place and as I had mentioned I was on the long side in the morning so the long side was fine until it wasn't you know and then when we fell out which was not what I thought would happen it doesn't matter what I think I just you know basically 
dance with the market and if something changes it's like turning the ship around turn the ship around get short and then the targets down below um, become uh, to traverse yesterday's range or value error and let me give you some of these statistics 39.18 was yesterday's value area high in the ES. 39.18, so what, what that meant was 70% of the volume for the day, and remember it was a balanced day, both sides active, tended to have somewhat of an upward skew, but we kept returning back to the middle. That's what balance is. 39.18 was that level. And in the ETH, we tested down towards that level, and we didn't take it out. So that was suggesting to me the long side. And that's why early in the day, the long side made sense. Okay. However, when we broke back inside that 39.18 level it set and failed, basically, that sets up a potential to traverse that entire value area. The value area low, which means the lower side edge of yesterday's most accepted value where 70 percent of the volume took place was 38.90 so that was our potential target below and along the way the most traded price yesterday was 38.97 so we had those targets now if we go take a look you can see we took out yesterday's low the current low is here, and 38.55 was a key low from, uh, I think it was yesterday. Now, if we take this out, we're going to be breaking out of what's called balance, and then we have the potential, eventually, to come down to 50, which is resting liquidity, and this liquidity almost 942 contracts and this is where the heat map is really valuable because I can tell at a glance that there is uh, this liquidity is here and it's been in here since before the RTH so and that isn't it interesting and it's a strike price of course so that's a potential area and target and of course it's not a trade recommendation but this is kind of how the market is set up now so now now, is everybody with me? I, uh, my description of where value was yesterday, does that make sense? And by the way, that's basically based on concepts of market profile and also volume profile. So does that make sense? By the way, those of you in the Discord chat room, uh, if you have questions for me uh, that relate to anything we discuss, uh, please post them in the Trader Lab chat uh, as opposed to uh, messaging me directly. Uh, uh, since I get too many of those, and I, I can't, I'd rather just <laughs> answer it for everyone because I get a lot of similar questions. That'd be very helpful for me. Uh, and also in uh, you guys in uh, YouTube. By the way, welcome. Thanks for being here on a Friday. It's been quite a busy week, you know. So I don't know about all of you, wherever you are. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> it was very active trade today. And once we broke out, I have to tell you, I was pretty, I was, let's just say, active, you know. So that's why I probably started a few minutes late today. I just, you know, have to deal with the... Uh, trading which is why we're here right so let's go take a look at what's going on in the microstructure now for those of you if you're new here basically what I attempt to do is use microstructures to position in the market and that means attempting to read inside the auction for example this is a consolidation the market broke down return to it right here Let's, let's take a look at this. Right here, this little behavior, this is a short, okay? A scale, and these aren't recommendations, you know, I'm just sort of pointing out behavior, so you can see structures to potentially engage in the market. And so you can understand, so what you have is chop, 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 break up, break back, chop, chop, chop. So I'm looking at the chop, chop, and this is an auction. 
and look at the behavior. So chop, 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 chop. And the auction is too low, too high, too low, too high, too low. And I'm looking, you know, for an area because this is my target, right? So, but here come the buyers and they squeeze. So I go, oh, I guess that's not it. How about up here? Boom, boom, boom. So I'm watching. Now, what I can do with these, and this is what, where for me at least, Bookmap is really helpful, is I can see inside. And I'm looking, now if the market is short, we know that retail traders have, uh, and let's call it weak hands, or just those who want to protect uh, open trade profit, are trailing stops under the market. So, and they typically will trade their stops behind consolidations. And because retail traders tend to act the same way, they're going to pile them up here. And that's what you can see when this releases. This energy, the stops behind here, releases. And then you see 92, boom, 142 stops going off. But here, let's look again. So there's 142, 162. Let me just try to open this up for you. What I try to do is, first of all, I try to anticipate behavior. I anticipate stops above yesterday's low. Isn't that logical, right? I also look at this, and this is an outside edge. So let's observe here. So the market's coming up 154 stops, eight stops. Isn't that interesting? Eight stops. So stops, stops, and I'm looking for exhaustion. Well, one of the tools I use is uh, it's part of the MBO package in Bookmap, and, and what that is is uh, it shows the stops and icebergs on chart and also below. But on chart, I want to see it, and I have this set to see everything. But fortunately, it also aggregates, so I can I don't have to have all kinds of little numbers on here. I can adjust this so it puts them together. But if I zoom out, it breaks them apart. So I get more detail, you see. So I kind of keep an eye on all this. And I want to see the detail, but I don't want to be overwhelmed by the minutia. So I have that possibility. Here's the key. 141 stops. Thanks for playing. Enjoy yourself. Have a great weekend. And here we have eight. Now, what is that? Well, from our life in indicator world, that is divergence. Higher price lower stops. Now the thing about a stop, remember what's a stop? It's a market order. Where do we anticipate potential retail trader behavior? Stops over yesterday's low. If we check into yesterday's low and we can't continue, and this is a high volume node, if we can't get back above here, we are now potentially at an outside edge for potential mean reversion and on to target below. I hope that makes sense. So let's look into this a little yes. bit. So, so here's what you have. Chop, chop, so exhaustion, chop, 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 break. So in here is a potential short, right here. Because I'm going, uh, maybe. You know, I'm in a fractal that's very micro, so it's almost like, uh, maybe. You know, maybe. And that's best I have any time I put a trade on is maybe. So here's what happens. Exhaustion. See, there's no buyers. See up here? There's really nobody here. Do you see the buyers? I just see seller, seller. It's subtle, and it, I, it's, it doesn't activate me. It puts me on alert. Because, and I don't do this in the middle of nowhere. I typically... I mean, you can do it whenever your trade plan suggests, of course. But I want to see something where retail trader behavior might uh, take place. And that would be over yesterday's low. Uh, everybody write that down, please, if you're not familiar with this. Think like a retail trader. Don't act like one, you know. So when I'm looking at, let's just say, across the uh, tundra, I'm looking where retail traders might have collective behavior and that's why at yesterday's low you see these in my opinion 124 stops why collective behavior if those stops are taken and there was more on the way up but this is the high number of stops why because they're all the herd 
I almost, I mean, I think like it's a herd of, I don't know, fish. Uh, by a herd, I mean a school of fish or a shoal. You know how they all move together? Well, retail trader behavior is fairly dependable because most or many do the same thing. So if we anticipate their behavior, we can also anticipate their stops above yesterday's low. I'm giving you a thought process. I hope this is logical. Does it make sense? Is that a yes or we don't know? If if it doesn't make sense, ask the question. YouTube also. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so let's go take a look at the behavior. So this is a potential short location, potential outside edge of a distribution if and I don't know what comes after this because I, I haven't looked you know uh, and if I did look I can't even remember <laughs> you know there's so much of this uh, but it means the potential to come back towards the high volume area which is here and here and then potentially lower so we'll see okay so let's see what we have so potential short break pull back it would be here against here here's your high volume node remember this acts like its own little VPOC in other words this is an auction this is a auction chop 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 and the fact is alignment so if you have a plan and it's not so much uh, that you have all these things listed but part of a plan at least in my opinion is anticipating behavior and where it might take place and it's I think pretty natural and, and ask yourself the same question is it fairly natural that we could test yesterday's low and that stops might be there and if we don't get back into yesterday's range we can continue lower that's logic you see so that's this anyway that's the thought I hope this all makes sense So what is the first job, of course, when we put on a trade? Does anybody remember if you've been here before? Get risk neutral. That's right. Getting a scale, risk neutral. How about you in uh, YouTube? By the way, in YouTube, uh, you can adjust the um, resolution, and you can put it to 1080p. Sometimes it doesn't automatically do that, just so you know. So this is our short. Goal is a scale right so if you got in here this area or in here wherever you are your risk is above this swing so it's a few points this is within my wheelhouse you know two three points after that I, I start sneezing because I'm allergic to it so I want that's why I got into and looked at these microstructures because it's really about the sh smallest I can slice it down and read behavior. Um, I can sometimes see the behavior in a smaller structure and but I want to see something a little more meaningful so it gives me kind of a heads up maybe and then I want to see see this last little swing notice we broke below it see the red dots so I that's and those are delta by the way so but that is telling me obviously there's buyers and sellers you know uh, right there's two sides to a trade it, it typically right there isn't just one but this is the delta so it's showing me in the, this move that it was the sellers who were dominating it okay so that's the delta they were crossing over so that is the urgency and that's what showed up in delta you guys uh, are you guys with me so risk neutral so you guys kind of see this YouTube does this make sense so I'm looking inside and because I can see the Delta I'm seeing the aggressor the and that's really market order okay so they're crossing over and that's a, a, a more it's considered based on the Delta a more aggressive participant so that's what these dots are showing so it's not just about selling or buying volume it's who's aggressive in that 
I hope that's useful and that makes some sense and it gives you more insight uh, to what we're ap actually seeing. Okay, so this is our short. Now, where's the stops? Let's go back the other way. We know we got these guys up here. We exhausted, right? No buying above here. That's the exhaustion. That's the tip off to look for the reversal. Here's the delta, aggressive selling. Here's the pullback. So chop, chop. This is a high volume node right here. Right? Can you all of you see this little? Let me move it over. I want to sh I'm going to show you the minutia because this is how you can use tools like Bookmap to give you the insight and potentially the courage and conviction <laughs> if you can recognize the behavior to interact with the market if it aligns with a location based on your trade plan and experience and knowledge of the market. Uh, these trigger structures are going to show up everywhere, but in my opinion, they have to be aligned with market behavior and for me retail trader behavior is a consistent process so I lean on that well Tori that's a function the question is what's the difference between the downswing compared to a pullback and an uptrend well we're in a downtrend so right now we're looking at pullbacks um, in a downtrend so we have to wait for an uptrend to talk about that but it's really just the opposite behavior. You'll be seeing uh, longs uh, getting taken out uh, in an uptrend uh, on counter rotations, and then you'd be looking for the opposite thing. You'd be looking for uh, the opposite, to sell stops, to exhaust, to consolidation, and then getting aligned. That's what I was doing this morning when I was on the long side before we, we uh, reversed context. So I, anyway, I hope that answers your question, uh, Tori, and thanks for being here. So let's look. So this is a short. Again, we're looking at the delta, right? See this energy. All right. Now, remember we have a target. And again, a target is just a maybe at best. Here, 38.50. It has potentially an eventual target. And of course, I have to say the caveat, it's not a trade recommendation. Here's the low of the day. This is a previous low that we checked um, in the ETH, and we reversed off of, and I, without going back and looking, I think it was yesterday, um, and then we had that battle yesterday, which was two-sided trade. Now, this is back on the, uh, you know, as a potential. If we break below it, this is the next target down, and then there is our potential more extended targets and I have no idea of course if they're on the uh, plan for today. It's not up to me, it's up to the participants. This is a naked volume point of control around 3830 and let me explain. This area here is a composite high volume node that acts like one of these. This was the highest volume area the last time we were down here. We checked it I think yesterday in the ETH and rejected it. Okay, We are now back here again. What that is suggesting to me, and again, it's a maybe at best, is why does the market need to come back if it already checked? Well, it went back in the other direction and found its sellers, and now these buyers are in trouble. So potentially here and here. And what this is, this behaves the same way as this. This is a price check in the highest time frame we track which means all the volume that ever traded here and previously when we were in this area we left this behind and we went to life of contract high so now and we tested it and were repelled from it yesterday well today we failed we're coming back that is suggesting sorry Charlie the long side is failing so now this is at risk this is next and this is the same process, but this is an artifact of high volume that was left behind the last time we were down here. This is left behind from the developing daily time frame. This one was left behind in the high time frame. And this down here is what's called a low volume node in the highest time frame. And so you understand what a low volume node is. Now I'm going to take you back into our current fractal 
our developing time frame, just so you understand all these pieces, this is what a low volume node looks like. But imagine the same kind of thing in a much larger structure. It's all generic, it all behaves the same way. And even our little triggering event here, it's the same process in micro. I hope that makes sense, and if it doesn't, fractal Ivita means inside. It's like those um, and I never say it right, so I apologize. Uh, Mashutska dolls. And um, it's inside of inside of inside. And what we're doing is we're slicing this down kind of like an onion, and we're looking inside of microstructure to get aligned with a developing daily structure to be aligned with the higher time frame structure. So trading inside out, really, with alignment. So we need uh, locations to try to uh, engage with the market. So that's what fractal is. It's inside. It's like those little Russian dolls. So let's see what happens on this one. Remember, job number one is to get risk neutral, so we have to get scaled. Now, if you're not familiar with what this means, it means is if you enter here and your stop is up here, you want to cover that risk. So, and that means whatever, and this is just one way to do it. There's other ways to think about it. But for me, if I risk three points or two and a half points, my first contract comes off at two and a half points. Now, mentally, I'm at ease because I've managed my risk, and now I can see if the trade gets to the next location or not. So let's see what happens. So we have our rotation. We have our scale, risk neutral. Now we're going to watch. And this is where it gets interesting. So observe, please. Now, what did we have here? Does everybody remember? High volume, right here. This is where the short was. Here's the retracement. This is also a potential entry. So it was here, break, scale. Here, potential, short, return to test. Let me show it to you again. I know this is micro, but as a day trader, I'm interested in the shortest time frame I can interact with the market and hope to get risk neutral. This is this high volume right here, this little thing. And what this is showing right there where you see 735 contracts is that's where the most interaction took place right in here in this little area. So it is saying this is too high because we only went up there and then came down. And it's saying if this is too high and it comes down, comes back to the high volume and then falls away from it, that's a micro auction. And what an auction is, is trying to find out a fair price. And we see these in consolidations. However, remember, the structures and where you engage with the market is the key element. And remember, what's the key element? S retail behavior stops over yesterday's low and exhaustion. So we have that, right? So now I'm looking for the short. For me, the short is here. And if I didn't see it, let's just say, uh, you know, I can't move that fast. And part of that has to do with experience practice right this is my high volume area so let's look at the retracement this is the test now i prefer you know me but don't forget i've been doing this a little while so i can i can enter here it's at some point it's this unconscious competence that develops from doing something for a long time i see it i don't have to really see it clearly I have a location. I'm kind of ready for it. I anticipate it. I don't make it up as I go along. I'm using retail trader behavior to give me an edge of potential what they might do. And then if the market or the behavior confirms it based on my trade plan, then I can uh, interact. But here's the high volume. Notice the pullback. This is a potential short here. And your risk would be above here. So... It's pretty much almost the same location. Now, if you're like me, you can't enter here. Why? Because you're waiting to see. So you have a little more risk maybe entering over here, and your stop needs to be over this high. Still, to me, pretty palatable for the S&P, especially with potential you know, to move lower. So let's see the behavior. Yes. Short. 
So again, scale, risk neutral, right? And now we hold. Is everybody seeing this? Just want, just want to know if it makes sense and you can see it. Are you guys with me? Matrushka doll. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it right. I better just spell that out and write it somewhere. So now the issue becomes trade management. Let's observe. So let's go see what this thing is doing. Remember, we have a target here. You know, this is our target. Observe. The short was here, here, right? Pullback here, scale, risk neutral. Pullback to here, here, pull back. Now remember, where's your stop? Depending on your time frame, this is up to you how to manage your trade. Your stop is here. You would be scaled, depending again on how you dance with the market, or under this area, the low volume. Remember, this is like a this is a larger time frame consolidation. Okay. So this is the outside edge. Remember, I said low volume node. That's like, and this is mean reversion. If you were here yesterday, do you remember we were trading mean reversion? That is outside in. Outside in, right? So, this short is still valid. Nothing has changed other than noise. Let's watch. Again, I don't know what was going on here other than I'm trading a plan. So, watch here. So, if you're scaled, well, I'm just going to keep it basic, okay? I'm not going to get more advanced for you guys because why should I annoy you? This is the next target, right? Is everybody tracking with me? Does this work? So, short here. Opportunity here. Another opportunity here. Another opportunity here. Target. Not saying, just, you know. And you saw this in real time. I hope you find this useful. And if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Because this is simple, but not easy. I'm doing a simple process. In my opinion, you don't need complicated. Complicated is the enemy of making a decision. Simple keeps your mind focused on a few key elements. So to summarize, I am trading inside out. What that really means is, and I'm, it's a fractal, and all a fractal is, is the same as those Russian dolls. Inside of other higher time frame structure. Now, if you're a trader who likes to take eight, ten point stops, if that's your game plan, that's great. I'm not in that, that's not me. I'm someone who wants to dance with the nuance because I am risk adverse. So, it, yes, it means I take more trades, it means I get scales and get taken out, and it means I take stops. However, if I protect my account and it can risk two and a half, three points with this kind of possibility, I suspect that might work. It works for me. Now, 3850 was important, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to call it an obstacle. And what that means is, if we return to it, we want to observe it. It's not necessarily actionable, but it's the behavior was significant here. Often we come back to these levels at some point. I want to look at it a little more closely just so you know. And these are not trades. This is behavior. And right here, you can see there was behavior and the market ran away from it. So I want to just open this up for you guys so you can see it.
here. Break, pullback. This is now resistance. If I was trading actively, and again, these are not recommendations, considering the higher time frame context, we are below here and we have extended targets below. This is potential. And this is, again, I have to caution you, this is just what I might do, not what you should do. The way you develop confidence in any process is you have to study it and understand it. This by itself is not actionable. What supersedes everything for me is the context. And the context is we're in a trend configuration going down. So then it's just sell. Not a recommendation. That's just me. And any buying I do is covering. It is not, uh, for me, I don't counter trend trade in a trend. I can counter trend trade in uh, balance like yesterday. I could be long, short, that doesn't matter, you know. But, the, and this morning, the same thing. But this morning, it was long side on the counter rotations. Now, shorts until it changes if it does. And I don't anticipate much change at the moment. So, break here is aligned with the context. Pull back, test, watch. What do we get here? So the break, they execute. Thanks for playing. 989 stops go off here. That's pleasant. 1900 sell stops. This is showing us the energy being released. The longs at the moment are wrong. Thanks for playing. Break, pull back, chop, chop, chop. Watch. Now I'm going to go into the microstructure. Everybody, I hope you find this useful looking at the microstructure. I know if it's boring or something not useful, you can, you know, let me know. Are we good with the microstructure? Are you guys interested in that? Uh, Zimbru, the E in front of the uh, is executed. Those are icebergs going off, okay? So buy icebergs. 800 buy icebergs here. Now, when you see a buy iceberg, one of the things for me when I see icebergs is I'm not sure if they're getting if they're initiating or covering. My suspicion, though, I'm going to say without knowing because there's no way to know, I'd say they're covering. So that's just me. And look where it executed, 55, see, here. So they're covering going into this. So anyway, let's look here. Do you guys want to see this microstructure? Is that a yes? Okay, I just want it to be helpful. So this, it's the behavior and the liquidity. If sometimes what happens is we come down towards liquidity and are repelled by front running. Other times we trade through it and reverse. I think of them like support and resistance. I mean, mentally at least. And then it's the behavior on the return. So look what we have. Seven stops go off here. And what does this look like right here? Volume. See it over here? Volume. So this is just the same as that other little fractal we were looking at in my the way I look at them so I'm looking now for the break and the pullback do we get the pullback right here see this watch chop 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 this is an auction in the microstructure I'm against what I perceive to be potential underlined because you don't we know know anything other than maybe at most and I'm looking again at the stops no one If you open them up, you can kind of see. See the exhaustion here? So it's the chop, chop, chop at the location, not in a vacuum. A one lot. Then what? I'm waiting to see if it pops up and comes under or just pops up and reverses. I'm going, because eh. what I'm doing when I'm sitting here, I'm watching and anticipating. If you play chess, it's the same process. It's a strategic approach. You know if your opponent makes a move, uh, you might be able to recognize where this opponent is going. If I see a counter rotation, I'm looking now for the move from the other side. If you play chess and you make a move, don't isn't the idea to try to pull 
the op the opposition into behavior well i'm looking at the same thing counter rotation my opposition these buyers here they're my opposition i want to be a seller because we have broken below in a higher time frame key behavior and location so i'm, I'm giving you a sense of how i put pieces together does that make some sense yeah louis so watch this is our micro high volume node a ton of volume went off here you can see it 1300 contracts and we're below it okay so I'm looking for the test of this area for a short again no buyers up here there's a one lot one stop going off who's that watch the behavior you see the behavior this is a short now do we come back no let's see see the behavior so this now this might not be your thing I understand this is takes a lot of practice and skill but I want you to observe the behavior and the last thing you want to do is get careless and reckless with something you don't you know you're not accustomed to but this is something that I would suggest take a screenshot and you have to put it in context for what's going on. We're in a trend configuration down. And let's go back. And remember, what do we do? We're falling out of a key uh, location. We took out yesterday's low. We're below this high volume area, which suggests this, which was the a fair price, is now unfair. We can come back and check this from below. We, and, and we also can come back and check this from below, which is why this was a potential short. And we're leaning against the high volume right here that was created. Are you guys with me? I mean, is this logical? Well, Rowan, there's not that really much as indic I, there are no indicators on this chart, Rowan. All this is is very simple. This is buy stops. These are sell stops. This is icebergs. There's nothing else I'm looking at, other than the liquidity, uh, the structures. These are not indicators, and what the volume says, because this is auction market theory. This is liquidity, and this is something you don't see unless you have a tool and this is called the heat map and it allows me to look I can look up and down the ladder and see where the or where the resting liquidity is here's more down here how would we even know that there's 640 contracts here but I'm and the chain all this is changing and moving around this is the limit order book well I can just look right here there's there's that has potential and it might do it today it might not this is the next target for today right here no indicators I, I hope you know that makes sense I don't use indicators is this helpful I'm not a believer in indicators as if those of, and it's not that if indicators work for you that's all fine I'm, it's just uh, what I found is I over I complicate things because the illusion with an indicator is that somehow you can squeeze risk out and what those who use indicators tend to use multiple indicators and what that really is and what it really says which most of us don't understand is that it's random and it's an attempt to curve fit indicators to different market conditions so we put more indicators on to try to make up for the other ones that don't work. And if you're doing that because you thought indicators were the answer, uh, to me, look in your software, count, and take the time, because it'll take you probably a while, to count how many, quote, indicators are in the software package. The next question is, why do you need all those indicators? Isn't there just one, two, or three that are really the right ones? And is your job to try to, quote, find the right one? Is it possible there isn't a, quote, right one because the market is random and all it is with indicators or multiple indicators, however you lay it out, is an attempt to have a curve fit. And the reason you're doing it is because they don't work. 
So, and I'm not saying they don't work sometimes because everything works sometimes. The problem, as I experienced it in, in my trading career, was that over time, it was an inconsistent process which created random outcomes. So the thing I found was if the market is random and it changes its behavior in a day, which it does, then one indicator that might work somewhat in a rotational market gets obliterated in a trending market. So, you know, it's kind of like how do you drive it's like having a stick shift and you're driving, which, what condition is it? Are you going up a hill? Are you on, on the highway going straight? Uh, is it twisting and turning? Well, what are you doing? And you're trying to chase the market with an indicator that's backwards looking. And this is not a rant or anything. Watch the behavior right back here. You see where we are? Observe. Anyway, and if you think indicators, I haven't worked with indicators then you should watch my introduction video that is in under more in the uh, YouTube channel. And also, uh, if you're new in the Discord chat room in Bookmap, um, pinned to the top of the text channel is uh, my uh, foundation video. So you can understand a little bit about my background, you know, which is beyond indicators. It's system design and development, uh, swing trading, trend following. I mean, I back in the Stone Age, uh, we didn't have um, we didn't have anything. So I'm just saying, as I kind of grew up with the indicators. So we're getting back above here. This is important. So now nothing to do. Okay. So this trade is done. You know, I think it's fine. I'm sorry. It was wait. Where was I? I'm forgetting even where it was. It's been so long. Oh, it was up here somewhere. Is that a good trade? We got to the next level. I do the same thing. This is an obstacle. See the behavior. Back here. Stop pick. Exhaustion. Potential short. So let's look. Remember, these are not rocks. You know, this is not the Rock of Gibraltar. This is an area. There's your low volume right outside edge right there. So let's go look to the left. Here, stops are here. Where did we go? This is called a stop pick. So what I do is, first of all, remember, retail trader behavior. This is the swing, okay? We come up. We tag it. We come through here. That's fine. We take the stops. Only 19. Does this look familiar? Does this look familiar? 130 stops. Stop pick. 20. Now, watch. This is a short. I should be a little more observant, but when I'm, I'm trying to give you an, uh, information, you know, on multiple levels. So it wouldn't make any sense to you if I'm just going to say to you, well, yeah, this is our over under. And then we have the last swing. What's above the last swing? You have to kind of think about these things. Well, stops. If we have all these stops on the way up, and let's open this up a little bit. If And we have 20. That's fine. We're over here, we're over the last swing, and where are we? Low volume area, outside edge. The way this tends to work is this. This is called mean reversion. And if you remember yesterday, we were trading mean reversion for the day. Now what you have today is, and this is where the fractal concept comes in, but in addition to that, context. And if you don't understand context, you really need you really need to think about the term and watch my video and also go online and read about and you could just very simply read about uh, volume profile market profile and auction market theory go to wikipedia you know, it's not rocket science and don't overcomplicate it keep it simple there's enough challenge in the minutia of trading that you don't complicate it obscures what's happening and actually you know you've heard the term paralysis by analysis um, and I've been there and done that and uh, indicators are an attempt to curve fit for me 
again, just me. So if you're a profitable trade, and it's not that indicators can't fit in this. It's just that how, since indicators are backwards looking, how can you, how can you operate in something like this? Unless you're, you know, and I'm not saying you can't. So, but we're anticipating the stop pick and 50s the over under. I remember no precision in the market. For me, the profile's much more precise. This is just behavior, not a wall. This is the outside edge. And the way it works, mean reversion is outside in. Do any of you remember mean reversion? Have you seen this before? Mean reversion. David, what's hard about context is understanding that if the trend is down, we're going to have counter rotations, right? The market typically is not a bullet train. And what we need is how do we get involved in, in aligned with the higher time frame? Remember what I said, fractals? What we're trying to do is get aligned. Well, the market rotates. It just doesn't you know, even if it's going down, you're going to get short squeezes, short covering, you know, shorter time frame traders. And that's what creates the rotations. And these stops create the rotations. Remember, retail trader behavior. Once the market starts reversing, you're going to have retail traders like us hitting the eject button. They're buying at the market. They're also, their buying lifts the market into trailing stops that retail traders like us are using. And they're typically over the near swing highs. That's what was at 38.50. So that's why you're seeing the stops. This is the logic and what creates the counter rotations. Retail trader behavior. Think like a retail trader. In fact, write this down. Think like a retail trader. Don't act like one. So if you're thinking like a retail trader, you can anticipate the potential behavior and where it might happen. Just like, remember, where were we getting short higher? Yesterday's low of day, right? Retail trader behavior. What is different? It's the same. Except now I've got this and I have some structure that's created by the auction. This is volume profile. And let me just show you a little more here so you can kind of see what's going on with this. Now, you're going to look at this and go, what am I looking at? What this is, it's representing volume at price. So instead of looking vertically at time bars, candles, whatever you're looking at, you know, which is just price, this organizes it differently. I can still see price, but I'm seeing the volume at each price. Every time there's a tick of volume, a buy or a sell, I can see it represented in this bubble, but more important, it adds it all in here. And the volume represents what the participants think of value. In other words, is this the fair price? Well, if we come outside into low volume, then the participants go, yeah, this is too expensive. This is a, just a bigger consolidation. If we don't come out of this area, then the potential is to come back to the high volume area. This is the same, and this is mean reversion. And then the potential is to come down to the other side. So it's a rotation. So the move up is what we call a counter rotation and as a trader my objective is to try to get aligned with this higher time frame which is under this important area right which suggests lower because we have targets below does everybody see this pietro is this making some sense How about you guys in YouTube? Does this uh, make sense to you guys? If not, ask a question. That's why we're here today. You're here and I'm here. 
So let's make the most of this, okay? And if this is helpful, if you're if you're getting something from this, please hit the like button uh, over there in YouTube. And if you want to, if you haven't watched the uh, foundation video, it's under more uh, in the YouTube, wherever more is, and um, you, I think it's down below somewhere. And uh, watch that. It, it's it's a mini course in what I'm doing here. It'll save you tons of time and it has examples of trades and all kinds of things in there that I think you might find useful. So here we are back here. Here, so outside edge, let's look. This is a higher developing time frame. This is the daily time frame. All the volume you see up here is today. Now up here, we fell out of this one. Think of it, it's an auction. Remember, auction market theory. And what the market did, and I'm just going to take you a little higher so, so you can see what happened. This was where we were earlier, right? And we rotated, we traded through here. Once we fell out of this, the market is saying, the participants, this is too expensive. Now we're auctioning down here, right? Same process. However, if this is now the fair price in this region, and this is an auction, it moves along and it keeps, you know, it may move lower, continue lower, lower. These are targets that we still have open for potentially for today. Again, we don't know. But this is now the fair price. So when the market rotates to an outside edge and it doesn't leave this auction, then we want to attempt, if it's part of your plan, etc., to sell the outside edge, and that's what mean reversion is, to come back into here. And then, since the trend is down, potentially continue or not, or just stay in here for a while before it potentially releases or returns back. And I suspect, since we're in a higher time frame under here, right, that this is next on the hip parade and maybe lower. Let's see what it's doing. I hope that's a decent explanation and you guys can relate to it. So this is a short, not a recommendation, not right? We're just narrating. Let me get back here, losing my place again. Wherever it was a short, I forgot. Right, the check of this pop, right, pick. It was here, pick, short. And here's, let me show you again what it looked like. right this is so this was the over under right pick short scale pullback I think this was the pick right short scale comes out it would take you out no loss pick short outside edge you see the thing with mean reversion the, and the challenge I want you to know the challenge with this is where is the real outside edge? It can still probe up into here, and that's what this is. So let's look. Let's look inside. Now, again, this is called day trading. And what it is is trying to get aligned. So this was the outside edge. Did we take it out? I think we just touched it, right? So this was the short, remember? After the initial stop pick, we have the exhaustion short. You'd be scaled. You'd have no risk on this trade. You have another opportunity right here. You'd have no risk on the trade. You see what I'm saying? So that's what our goal number one is. And we're anticipating this, this, and this. Now, all wrote, write this down. Rotations are random, and we don't know. So let's watch. This is our high of this swing. Does it take it out? Yes. And what is that? That's like a cheap shot. It's a stop pick, right? Again, I'm still in my location. And I'm fiddling around with what? 50. But it was a stop pick. So let's look. Let's look into this right here. Now, if you cannot activate on this, do not be concerned. It takes practice, and I mean serious, intentional 
practice. I have these, they happen, I cannot act on them fast enough in spite of it all. That's just the next one I don't get. It doesn't matter. However, let's look at the structure. 130 stops coming up. We're back above here. And we come out to the outside edge. Here's your exhaustion. See the divergence in the stops. Higher price, less. So exhaustion. Now no buyers. See it? No buyer. No buyer. So it's very subtle. But now I cannot activate on this. I'm looking for a break and a potential pullback to here. And here's the next thing. If it breaks below this one, I can still operate here. So against this. So this cluster of volume is what I want to lean against. Let's see if we get the opportunity right here. And my risk is above this. It's still within my wheelhouse as far as risk goes. So let's see what happens with this thing. So here, pull back. More risk than I, you know, but I can handle it. Why? Trend is down, and I have this target. Chop, chop, break here, potential short, against this volume. This is fractal. This is what microstructure looks like. I have this volume, but I stop has to be above here because we could come back to this right here. So there's more risk in this trade, and it's up to you. If you have a limit of a three-point stop or whatever it is, then this trade wouldn't qualify. Okay? Uh, it's up to you. But I have a target. So for me, I'm looking at it from two ends. I'm saying, what's my risk-reward ratio? Is it worth it? for a 31.32 target from 50-ish or 48, can I, should I risk four points for 31, you know, for 10? Yeah, that works. So let's watch. Scale, right? So this is our next area, right? So we have a scale. Did not take this out, right? Comes back here to the micro high volume. Remember that? And I said you got to be above here. It's another short opportunity right here. And these are things we don't know. Break, pull back, break, pull back, micro, see it? And we're leaning against this. Stop right here. See the alignment? Now I understand you're looking at this for the first time. You're probably going, what is going on? Let's put it back into the pieces together. Outside edge. Stop pick. Thank you for playing. Notice the exhaustion. Short here, short here, scale, risk neutral. Have no idea if we're going straight down or what we're going to do. Never do know. This is our outside edge. Pulls back. Where? To the outside edge. If, I can, if I'm ready to jump out the window because I'm expecting a stop, and believe me, I'm sitting here, I'm going, oh, this trade looks like junk. It's over. I ha can't begin to tell you how many times I'd be about here and I'd hit the eject button, and then the market goes to my target. That was something I had to go, you know, that might not be such a good plan. And that is a triggering uh, behavior that's your fight or flight behavior. You know, this is the saber-toothed tiger coming at you in the jungle. Let's get out of here. Well, that doesn't work in trading. In my opinion, in trading, what works is failure of structures, not random noise and rotations. So exhaustion. There's the move down. Delta showing the selling. Pullback. Now I have double structure. I have this. I have this. Over here to the left. Is everybody with me? And here's what it looks like. That little node right there, there's my high volume. See it? And look at the alignment. So I'll lean against that, and my stop's over that high. Does anybody have a question?
I'm just reading. I'm trying to catch up, okay? So, let's see what's going on here. I got to catch up. Sorry. If this is uh, too much minutia and it's not useful, please let me know. Um, and if you're kind of taken aback by this because it looks complex, I'm going to suggest that you kind of relax. And if you haven't seen this before, because I don't know too many traders who do what I do. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't met them. Um, this is something different. And the thing that makes it interesting, it is all about the market. It is not about indicators. All we're doing when we're looking at this is seeing who the participant was. It's giving us insight. That's something we don't get, again, with an indicator. I don't need a moving average to tell me the trend is down. I can tell you that. And I certainly don't need something to cross over that's lagging the market because what, what's the point of that, uh, at least for me? What I want to do is I want to slice it as close as I can with a smaller risk that I can identify and then look for risk neutrality. Risk neutral gives me the opportunity to go for the next targets. And I think that's a pretty good plan, you know, in spite of it. <laughs> in spite of getting stopped, in spite of getting scaled and stopped and all that, that's just the real world. But I'm in alignment. And this was my next target, right? Did we, did we hit it? Let me see. What did we do here? Now, there's more. Oh, we did get it. Well, okay, here's the next thing to observe, this from below. Now, what's going on? All right, not a recommendation. Watch the behavior here. Break, pullback. This is a potential short, but you know, a little behind the eight ball here, so nothing to do. Now, let's look at this. Let's use, let's think in, it, now fractal, this is multiple dimensions and multiple time frame, right? I know, you're going to go, oh my goodness, my head is spinning. Don't worry about it. This is our next target, by the way. Um, remember I said down here, down here, and we have more, but this was the next one. Now this was an artifact left behind from the last time we were down here. The market checked above, right? In the higher time frame, remember what we did, let's go back. Took out yesterday's low, took out this key area that repelled us yesterday in the ETH session, got below this obstacle, rotated back up to the, I see I'm summarizing here, to the outside edge of the distribution, which was, this is what the market is trading. And remember, auction is, it rotates in an auction. That sets up mean reversion, which is outside in, which is aligned, right, with the trend. So no longs just selling where trying to find that outside edge that's why we were selling these rotations up into this area right we took a few shots at it we i think we had one scratch uh maybe two or three shorts up in there and uh, uh what happened with those i think we scratched one and um we got targets and we're theoretically got the next target here and if you have a runner, you're still holding, you see. That's another thing that we would talk about, but not today. That is how you size. But if you're trading a two lot, which I th is the minimum in my opinion, and you have to vet this idea for yourself, is the job of the first one is to cover your risk. Now you've protected your account. Now along the way, you're going to take your full stop, you know, because that's part of trading. But if you have a plan... And you have vetted the plan, which means you've tested the locations and how you interact and trigger. You will find if you're risking X number of points, whatever it is, you need to be able to see where the obstacle or the counter reaction might take place and scale. Does it fit the risk you're taking to get risk neutral? That's part of a trade plan. And then what is the probability or percentages that you actually get to scale? That creates... And if it's, let's say, 60%, 65%, you get risk neutral, and then it's up to the other one 
to go on to whatever the potential target is, or you have a process for trailing and locking in some of it. That is what how you create a trade plan. So let's watch. Remember, this is the next target area. So we got our next target, which was from here to there, 30-ish, right? And then we have this down here. Now you could, I would be done here. By done means my trade is done because I trade targets, just me. And if you're someone who wants to have a runner, you know, kind of like the lottery ticket, then you have a trailing process because the, we don't know where that counter rotation might take place. Does everybody see what I'm doing? Does it make sense? No, I don't enter with a limit order above the obstacle because I have to see the behavior tech. Um, it's not, I, I'm not mechanical. I'm, uh, what I am is uh, process within context and I want to see structures and behaviors. So I never sell the top of anything or buy the bottom of it. I'm always waiting for what I consider something to lean against. In YouTube, how are we doing? Is this making sense? When I hear silence, I'm figuring you passed out. So I'm just checking if I should call an ambulance for you guys in YouTube. Notice the change in behavior. You see the green bubbles? What that basically is, that's the delta. That is showing you that the buyers are crossing over. See, that is what delta is. I'm assuming you guys know what delta is, but it's basically who's the aggressor. Because there's always two part, you know, there's always two players, you know, buying a seller. You don't get one without the other. So who's the aggressor? The aggressor, aggressor, aggressor. Buyers were aggressive here. Okay. Seller, sell. You notice the rotations are larger on the way down on the sell side. Aggressors. And now see the change in behavior. Buyer, 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 buyer. Now, here's the thing. Oh, we wanted to watch this, right? We gonna we want to watch this. So we want to watch this edge here, low volume node. We want to watch this. Just watch. And if we get up here, then there's here and up here. So this is our outside edge of this. So let's observe. Buyers, buyers, let's watch. Not a trade recommendation. We are tourists. So we're watching, nothing to do. We're tourists. Watch the volume right here. See, the thing here is, here's, where's the outside edge? It's up here. We can chop here, break higher, and you got to look to the left. Stops were here. Stops were here. Stops were here. So now we can just pull back, move higher, or rotate back down. I can't tell you which one. If you're trading very short term, this is a microstructure, but I prefer to get further outside. Just one trade. Now you can trade in this, but you have to have your, as they say, your stuff together. Because we're in a microstructure. You see this right here? Outside to outside. This is your outside edge. And this is what the fractal nature of the market is now. Say outside. Does this look familiar? Except this is a shorter time frame. See it? So I can trade this. This was a short right here. Where's the stops under me? Well, probably here. So I want to trade scale to get risk neutral. That's all I need to do here. And if it comes back up and takes me out, it doesn't matter, does it? Does it? Not to me. Because it's not about being right. It's about location, context, and risk management. After that, whatever happens is a bonus. So that's why if you got involved, you'd have to be scaled. Again, 
we may have more outside to go. Mean reversion. Mean. Watch the behavior here. So how do I put these pieces together? Watch. Exhaustion. 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 Not a recommendation. Observe. Alignment and exhaustion. And again, right, you know, it can do anything. So we're observing. Take a screenshot. Now, none of this is anything more than a maybe. Can you see it? Just give me a maybe. <laughs> say yes, say no. Uh, tacky... Um, What do I think about overtrading? Uh, I don't know what you mean, Alpha. Does you guys see the short, by the way? Are you with me? Yeah, well, Shazad, don't worry about being new. We're all new. It's a new day. We're new. Um, the, if you find this useful, give me a thumbs up, please. This takes time, but it's really simple. The thing that, if you had never looked at the market this way, it's like speaking a foreign language. I get it. Uh, and if you come here every day, um, and I've only been doing this in YouTube, I don't know, a week. It might be a week. So... Uh, I'll be here every day for you guys, assuming you're interested in it. As long as there's interest, I'll show up. And, you know, if there's if it's something that's not interesting or useful, then, you know, I won't continue doing it. But, um, you know, I really need to see that it has a material impact uh, and helps traders at least see that there's other tools. Uh, and not to do what everybody else does. I, I find that... Uh, if you're doing, think of retail traders, what their potential success rate is. There's a lot of reasons for that. I think a lot of it is they don't really understand how the market works. And they've been sold to the idea that you basically plug and play. You buy a piece of software, you throw some indicators on, read a book or two, maybe buy the magic indicator from some vendor, or sit in a chat room and somehow they become a trader. Um, I don't know what to say about it other than um, you have to find what resonates with you and the other part of it is something that works. So it's not about a belief, it's you beginning to learn a process that can you can relate to and then you have to create belief in it. Now there is an algo. See that behavior? Algo. Thank you for playing. So that's what you have to do, in my opinion. And if that's of interest to you, then, you know, fine. Now, that was nasty, wasn't it? Yes. Nothing you could do about that. That's the market. It still didn't take out our, our structure up here. It can, though. So we want to watch. This is a change in behavior, isn't it? This is part of trading. Nothing you can do about it. But this is still a good trade. So the trade fails, right, when it comes back over here. So you'd be risk neutral. So the worst that would happen to you is you'd scratch. And, and then the other part of, the other component that needs to be addressed, and write this down, is trade management. And that's really a function of your time frame. And someone was just asking about higher time frames, right? What's uh, Bitcoin, tel Tesla, Do Dogecoin, Luna bankruptcy? What is that? Is there some news or something? Oh, okay. So you think that's spam? Okay. All right.
So if, if this is useful, I need a thumbs up in the YouTube. Um, also, uh, there's a foundation video under more in the YouTube if you haven't watched it. Um, take a look. It's going to save you a ton of time, and this will make a lot more sense to you. I, I kind of go into some detail in there as far as, and it's simple. If this looks complicated, I'm going to ask you to have some trust. This is not complicated. It's reading sheet music or dancing, and it's learning the steps, learning a process, and then replicating it. And the thing about process is, and this is where I get pretty excited about it, if that's the right term at this point, um, is because I only need the same process to operate in multiple time frames. So what I'm doing is the same in all time frames. So it doesn't matter. I am trading inside higher time frames, but because of my risk tolerance, I'm using the micro time frame. And that's what this is right here. This is another short, by the way. So uh, to participate. Now, I'm an active trader, and the reason I, the activity is created, watch, icebergs are accumulating here. See? So we're going to keep an eye what's going on right here. Uh, targets are still open below, by the way. So, you know. But we don't know. This might be the low of the day might be in. I have no idea. And it doesn't matter to me because I don't know where the low of the day will be until hindsight. So in the interim, I just take my trades at my locations. My goal number one is to scale, which this short would have a scale. And then I'm back in the game because this is random. This behavior, this guy here, what was that? Random. Okay. If it exhausts after it picks the stops, it's the same as any other stop pick. All we did was blow through this high, take out the stops. There's the volume. Here's the short. Scale. Safe. Now, I'm a tourist. What's going to happen next? How about I tell you I have no idea because that's the truth. Um, well, mean reversion, I think, uh, well, first of all, in the ch uh, Discord, BookMap Dis Discord Traders Lab chat, boy, that's a mouthful, um, if you hit the pin, it'll take you to the top, and you'll see my video there, which you should watch. Do that this weekend, because then next week when you come back here, you'll you'll be 75% advanced from where you are now if you haven't done that. The other thing is there are, I don't want to say handouts, but there's downloads um, where you will see, I don't know if there's 50 or 100 examples of what I do. So download those things and they're they're pinned up there also so do that by the way uh, in youtube um we don't have that pinned uh but there is the video down below under more uh be sure to watch that this weekend if you find this interesting it'll advance your education exponentially so you don't have to you know this is i believe in keep it simple notice how the short are working notice and we're just throwing them on here you could see them right not complicated just dancing with the market except that the market is random it will take your stops if you're micromanaging but what are we trading does anybody remember it's called mean reversion outside in outside in you see it so there are no longs. Somebody asked me, um, what about longs? I think it's Malakura. Hi. Uh, I can't imagine a long. We're in a liquidating market. South. And only south in today's context. In the morning, I was long. It changed. So I turned the steamer around and I go short. 
And what happens is if something fails, I take a stop. I'm okay with that. That's the price of finding out. But along the way, I was batting on the long side, and it was fine until it wasn't. And then it's, okay, what's going on? Huh, something's changing. All right. And I have levels, and they were all posted up. Um, they were in here. And once we broke those levels, it's turned the boat around and head south. And then all these targets are now on the table. This one. And when I started this morning, I said, no, I, you know, I, we're going to go and squeeze some more. That's what was my anticipation, short covering into Friday. And, uh, that's, and we actually started that way, but then failed. Okay. I mean, see, the thing with me is um, I know I don't know. Write that down. You know if you're if, – in trading, it's, your opinion is not important. And I really mean my opinion doesn't matter. Opinions don't mean anything. It's the behavior of the participants. That's what counts. And when we recognize their behavior, and sometimes we don't, you know, right away, uh, and that's when things are changing, we don't know, right? Because we're changing what we see, and then when it changes, we have to adjust. Notice the mean reversion, outside in, with the trend outside. So the question about getting long is no long. But if the trend was up, we'd only be doing it from the other side. We'd be buying, buying, buying the rotations. Joe, uh, if you go to the Bookmap website, you can kind of see what is available. There's many more tools that I'm not showing that are available that I use. Um, but for me, the heat map, I, without having to be looking at the dome, I can, I can look over here and I sure, yeah, there's 330 you know, contracts here. But the heat map shows me. Also, it shows me if there's something jumps in front. These are algos. Well, I want to see them come down and pull. You know, but you see how they're bracketing? That's algo behavior. I can't do anything with algo behavior. Now, if somebody jumps in front of this with a big piece of liquidity, it's like somebody putting a top on a pot or the wind blowing. You know, it's like going to press it down. And we'll see this behavior. Like, does this guy come running up? You know, that's going to skew the book, and it has an impact. Okay? So, but for me, it's, it provides insight. I want to see the behavior, and in the downtrend, of course, I want to see these guys, this getting darker. See how, so watch, let's, we can watch this behavior. But for me, this is what counts. It's resting liquidity. It's also at a strike price. That's important. Just like we had the 50. Does everybody remember so long ago when we were targeting the liquidity, sitting up at 50, right? Remember? Now we took it out. And we rotated up in here. We were shorting here. Now we fell out of this distribution, right? This is an auction. It really, this represents a consolidation. So you know what this is? Think what a consolidation is. It's a big chop, chop, chop. And in what a consolidation is, is really an auction. In other words, where's too high, where's too low? And the market will rotate trying to determine if this is a fair price. This is where the high volume is. So the market's going around and around. If this is too high, it'll fall out and then do it down in another location. And that's so we're stair-stepping down because the market, the purpose of the market, and this is where market mechanics come in, and this is kind of something that's important to know. The market's trying to find a price that everybody agrees on. What's a fair price in this thing? So that's what the auction is, and that's why auction market theory. If you understand why the market does what it does, you're going to be way ahead of everyone who's just looking at a line crossing over because the line crossing has nothing to do, really, with what the intent and the function of the market is. Those are just, I, th in my opinion, an indicator is just uh, a simplistic plug-and-play uh, plug solution that doesn't address the context of the market. Again, a personal opinion built on just my personal experience, not necessarily, you know, truth for you, but it's my truth and my belief. And it's not because I didn't try, because 
uh, market profile was not available until around 1985, 86, and that's when I first got involved with it. So until then, I was with the rest of you guys. So, uh, you know, indicators and, and then writing my own indicators. So I went that way because that's what we had available, and I thought, you know, like everyone. And back then, there weren't a lot of them, you know. So, and over time, oscillators evolved. And now, like I say, open up your software and, and pick one. And then, again, ask yourself, why are there so many? Why did anyone need to make the next one and then the next one and then the next one? If you can answer that question, I think you already have, I think you know the answer. So let's observe. Is everybody with me, by the way? I hope this makes some sense and it's useful. So, Joe, um, I'm using the Global Plus, the Bookmap Global Plus version. Okay, I'm using the MBO package, which gives me stops and icebergs, rhythmic data, because rhythmic is the only data pr service provider that actually gives you uh, mark by order. So it, the orders are actually have a tag on them, and it tells you whether it's a stop, you know, or if it's an iceberg. So we can see that 500 stops going off. These guys are not happy. Neither is my 401k, but that's another topic. So, so let's watch the behavior. This is a target, right? This is an outside edge in the highest time frame. That is the same as one of these. That's a low volume node. This is a low volume node. This is our potential target again down here. So we'll see. No idea, right? We know we don't know. So we'll just keep, remember, this is here. Nice even number, nice strike price, very exciting. Is everybody tracking? Do you see the concept of the auction and what this represents? Because that's what this is. And um, if you, the auction is like going to the supermarket. Uh, Willie, scroll down to where it says more. And I don't know quite where it is you know how far down and if somebody knows where it is there in YouTube just post so um, others can find where that video is I think it says uh, live future streaming with Tom B you know how many are watching how long ago it started that kind of thing right you don't need YouTube premium it's open to everybody Braden. So let's get back in the game. So you guys saw the short, right? Look at the structure. Chop, 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 break, pull down, microstructure, micro high volume note. Watch. Break, pull back to the structure here. Pull back to the structure. South. Target. Is everybody tracking? Not complicated. Simple. Annoying? When you get, yeah. It's work. You want to be a trader? You got to do some work. What am I going to tell you? Volume. 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 Now, it's the alignment. It's not in the middle of traffic. It's the alignment. Outside edge. Mean reversion. I'm going to see if I can grab something for you guys, and hopefully I don't blow everything up here. Let me, let me try to get this for you. I want to show you this. This is what mean reversion looks like in a cleaner way so you can see it. This is from yesterday. And all it is is there's your outside edge. And the mean reversion is a return to the high volume area. That's all is going on. So chop, chop, up into this area. Now this is a Renko bar, just because I didn't want to show all the minutia. And it's just, you know, Renkos are just price-based bars. But it's this is what's important. That's the low volume node. So think, there's your auction, you see? Too high, and then the nature of it is to come back to the mean. That's why the name mean reversion comes from. Reversion. So if you took this, your target is right here. Then hold for potentially the other, you know, the outside edge, right? 
or whatever, you know, manage your trade. But that this is what it looks like. So I hope this makes sense. Is that helpful? Uh, at the moment, uh, I watch other futures besides ES, but for our stream, we're going to stick with the ES because it has enough range. And I think uh, depth. And to me, uh, the depth is very important for trade management. If as long as I have rotations, by the way, it could be, <laughs> it could be a pork belly. It doesn't matter. This process works on all markets. I traded NQ for years back in the dot com bust. I mean, I'm just saying that's all I traded was the NQ. Um, so I'm just saying is you can trade any market, but you have to adjust your trade management to the thinness so like nq it all, it's all the same with the exception that if nq doesn't have the depth you I mean you might have 12 contracts sitting here in the nq so you have to know that if you get a counter rotation since there's no depth and if there's stops that it could pop so to me the nq uh has more risk associated with it so the because the behavior of it and that's really a function of depth so Caution. you know thinness so but other than the idiosyncrasies of the market, it is all the same. Because the auction is the auction. The process is the same. But like anything, you have to vet the market. If you want to trade something else, um, you know, then. But I'm a fan of rotation. Because to me, what what is it about? It We could trade any market. As long as it has rotations and depth. But I think the ES is, a, you know, for me, I enjoy the ES, you know because I can manage my risk and I know that there's enough volume in there that I have a good chance of getting filled, you know, things of that nature. You know, all that's important to me as a trader. So that's my thinking. So watch this, right? So any questions on what a fractal is? Multiple time frame integration. And then what this is, mean reversion. What I'm trading is context inside of context. Trend day down. Ryers are context. Shorts only. Counter rotations, this is what it looks like. Outside in. Where's the outside? It's up at these edges. If we, and again, if this becomes where the market participants say, you know, this is too low, we can leave this whole thing behind. I would take a stop, and then we can come back up to the next one. And I'm perfectly okay with that. However, today, as until it changes, my job is to sell the rotations on these edges and it happens in all time frames it's right in here is the same process right in here is the same process this is more micro this is the chart volume profile it is showing me the volume in what's on the chart so i'm basically looking inside of this so this is higher time frame. This is the developing daily time frame. This is the more micro structure. Does that make sense? Amazing tool. And look at our alignment, right? Sure, it's a little noisy. I said, if you remember 50, we want to look at that. It's like resistance. Other than the stop pick, which is fine, towards an outside edge, which is fine, short. Does everybody see it? Can you see the pieces? This is your whatever doll that is. Are you guys following me? Yes. Short three by three. Short three by three. Rainier, I don't suggest you get out of your shorts. This is this is humor. Don't turn your camera on. Remember, if you're new here, uh, there's a video down there that you can watch that'll save you a huge amount of time to get aligned with what's going on here. Um, and then it's a matter of you guys coming and hanging out. Um, Bookmap is providing this for free. And, um, you know, while that's available, I would s I suggest maybe you take advantage of it if it, if it's something you're interested in. Um, if YouTubers, if this is useful, please hit the like button. Okay. Yes. Short midpoint reversal. Short midpoint reversal. I'm going 
going to try to copy uh, an image. I don't know if I can put an image in YouTube, but I'm going to try. Uh, let's see if it works. Nope, does let me do it. Yeti, is there any way I can copy that image um, that you just posted up above on Mean Reversion and get it into the U into YouTube chat? Or because I'm not familiar with YouTube. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, Matt. That's very appreciative. Thank you. While we're still on the shorts, meanwhile, asleep at the switch. Let's get back. To <laughs> Uh, you know, I read the chat and it kind of takes me out of the flow. By the way, here's something I do, um, and I'm not do when, when I'm streaming. You know, I'm not a great multitasker, so I kind of lose, you know, my focus because I have to, I'm looking at different computer, different screens, and different locations uh, to read the chat, and you know there is a delay in YouTube, so I mean, you know, it's just all, you know, takes me out of the flow. But here's what I do to stay in the flow, and it goes like this. And write this down. If this, then that. If not, then what? So, and it keeps me in the flow. So, if we get below here in this low volume node, if this, and I get up here and I short it, then what? Then back here. If not, then what? Then potentially up here. Change in context in a short time frame. So, as long as I'm trending, I am going to be selling. So, if this, right, short, and where's our short from? Let me get back here. Falling asleep at the switch. Here's volume. See, it was up at 50. Now, I can dance with this and all of these consolidations if I choose or not. I, and now, let's go into more micro time frame, okay? I think that's where I'm trying to go with this. See this little high volume node right here? That's micro. You see this low volume node? That's the outside edge. So it's a compilation of behavior. So this is my behavior. So I'm looking in here. Now here pops. Now if I took a short here, I would get a scale and get stopped out, right? I have no problem with that other than uttering some words at my, you know, and my broker sends me the gift basket. Uh, it comes back again. Look. Here, let's go into this one. Because this is trading. This is the real world. There's no ideal. If you want to be a trader, you have to accept random behavior in the market. There's no knowing. There's only maybe. And that if that doesn't suit you, then maybe trading... You, know, you should be an investor and not want to be a trader. I'm just telling you the real world, you know, because we all want nice and neat and pretty and like a little box with a bow on it and clear. It's all nebulous until you're right or wrong because they all look the same. They all look the same. So here's volume in here. There's volume up here, volume. So this is the areas I'm referencing, okay? Outside edge. Remember, mean reversion right outside in trend is down I'm trying to get aligned for continuation and again I have no idea if I take this this is my short against this volume see the micro volume right up here so this area aligned with this I'm using this volume to sell right here short stop above here scale get risk neutral. Now I'm hanging out. I'm going, okay, here we go. Come on. Right? Outside edge. Boom. What happens? Stopped. Scratched. See, that's why a minimum for me, two lot. And I can tell you, I usually have more. Back again to the outside edge. This is the challenge with mean reversion. You'll get popped because this is a low now a low volume so you know what it is what creates it the market didn't trade in there it ran through it so the market and if you accept the concept of auction market theory that is the market wants a check you know is this too high 
Well, it may come back up and check it. And since it didn't trade and there's stops, think of it as a consolidation. A consolidation has buyers and sellers on both sides, right? Buyers in the bottom, sellers on the top. And what's on each side? Stops, okay? So we can come up into these outside edges and we want to sell the outside edge, but we don't really know how far and we don't know if we'll come up, rotate, and then come up again, pop, and then come back in. That's the nature of mean reversion. So, you know, life in the fast lane. So here we are again. I'm out, scratched. What do I have? High volume, outside edge. So this is, I'm still looking to get short. Why? The trend is down. I'm looking for south of the border. So let's see. Real world of trading. Here's your volume break pull back to here in the microstructure so I'm leaning against all this volume you see it and all this is is what I call a stop pick thanks for playing chop 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 break now once I see the break in the pullback this is a short stops over here same trade just a slightly different location Remember, mean reversion, you are probing for location and you will take stops unless you want to put your stop way outside. That's subject to your plan. I'm kind of a fan of using a tight stop because my psychology is I'm risk adverse because I want to take shots on goal. I don't want to risk five, six points on a trade that I only have to risk two or three on, you see. So I'm going to probe. The goal being to get the scale. And based on the rotations we're seeing in the ES currently, I have a real good shot at getting at least the scale to cover my risk because of the nature of the rotations. Does that make sense? Uh, Donald is asking where that intro video is. Maybe um, I can throw the link in there. I'm going to try to do this without blowing everything up, guys. Um... Da, da, da. Here it is. Copy link. Here, I'm going to put it in here, okay? Let me know if that uh, link works. Um, and by the way, for downloads, you guys in YouTube, uh, my Twitter account, all that stuff is sitting up there, but you do have to download it. You know, it's worth it. It's going to save you months, if not years. That's just my opinion, of course. So I'm going to put that in here, Twitter. So there's there's all the information for you guys, okay? Um there's a little bio about me also under the more, okay? Yes. Long midpoint reversal. Long midpoint reversal. Uh, Trader Tay, I don't move my stop away. Because my first job is not to be right, it's to manage the risk. So it's not for me, there is no way to know anything. Um, I see mentally I put myself in a place of I know I don't know it releases me from the need to be right if you're moving your stop away that is really more a fight-or-flight response the need to be right the need to make dollars all of that which has no place in my opinion in trading absolutely doesn't belong in trading that is not trading moving your stop away unless it's part of your plan which is fine for me why move the stop? You see, you have to answer the question, why? And we don't think, I want you to know, we are wired to for risk aversion, uh, the need to be right, uh, to get approval from the market or significant others in our life so we can tell them how smart we are. I mean, and, and, this, and this is not a criticism. This is the real world. However, we bring all those that baggage, if you will, to trading. But trading is its own thing. Trading is its own world. 
with its own behaviors. And what we tend to do is try to fit trading into our world, our beliefs, our experience, and our emotional wiring, our wiring, which is fight and flight and all that. Well, trading doesn't work that way. So we have to learn new behavior. And not only that, we need to understand the behaviors that conflict with what it takes to be a successful trader. And we're not aware of that. Nobody tells us these things. You only find out by really introspection and time. When your hand grabs the mouse and you move your stop when you're not supposed to, per your plan, that is your, I think it's called the limbic system, you know, your wiring. I mean, if you step in front of a bus, you don't think about getting out of the way. In the market, your mind, your emotions, your wiring thinks you're stepping in front of a bus. And then your need to be right and get approval is another component. By the way, and we're all subject to this. It doesn't go away. Uh, early on, when I started having those challenges where I would, it would be like somebody else grabbed the mouse and did something stupid, you know, or the market was moving away and I'd impulse into it, fight or flight fight chase revenge you know all those emotions are triggered and then unconsciously we can respond to them without intention well that has to be managed the way you manage it is you need to recognize it once you recognize it you have to short circuit it and it's not by saying to yourself i'm not going to feel it it's recognizing it and then putting it aside acknowledging it say yeah i understand yeah you're trying to keep me from getting run over but guess what you know i'm not in front of the bus i'm intentionally in the market and i'm taking risk i'm managing my risk and i'm just going to let the trade work because they're all random i hope that's useful and i hope that makes sense Whoops. Let me see if I can get back here. So I hope you guys find this useful. Well, we close early if we don't have a plan. Um, we all do that. Everybody does everything. Whatever you do, everybody does. The, the thing is, what are you going to do about it? Um, we all we all come from the same place. We're all wired basically the same way, unless you're one of those individuals who seeks risk. You know, but I think most of us are somewhat risk adverse to a certain extent and we're attached to money. You know, so all these things are, are counter uh, intuitive to trading because out in the real world, if you want to call it that, it's about spending your money wi wisely, saving, not throwing it away, right? All that stuff. Well, that's what works out there. It doesn't work in trading. So we have to learn new behaviors that specifically apply to trading. And that's why you need a trade plan that articulates specifically what you're going to do. And you are accountable to your trade plan. Um, we have no control over this. So what do we have control over? It's our behavior, not the market, not the fact that the market's coming up right here. Why is it coming up there? Why did it come up over here? Why did it come up over here? Now, I think I can guess why it did, but why didn't it just keep going down to this level and now come up? The answer is, it's random. So if you're in a random environment, in my opinion, you have to accept it, and then you need a plan to operate in it accepting that you don't have control over any rotation and that yes your stops will get taken out you'll get taken out you'll get one ticked out on your stop or you'll get your scale will be one ticked and it'll be unable happens to me all the time and it's just part of trading you know and i mean don't enjoy it i, I mean i have responses emotionally but my if you if you have a career in trading and it might be hard to imagine but tens and tens and tens of thousands of trades then those events become just little insignificant data points and we're always looking to get better i'm looking to get better 
I'm looking I'm always looking to improve but and that's always going to be the way it is for me and probably anybody else who does this you know you never reach a point of oh I'm fine you know it's like what can, can I enter a little bit better can I shave a tick or two off think about a thousand trades where you're getting a couple ticks better per trade two ticks do you think that makes a difference it's things like that nuance but basically your accountability is to your plan not to that rotation now we look at the volume and we want to see the behavior here we're pretty low we're under key locations I mean we've hit just about every target down here that matters we still have liquidity sitting over here nice even number there's a chance we get there or not see the buy icebergs see the buy icebergs that's something too we may be done and I'm not saying we are I'm saying I don't know I stay in the I know I don't know but I can tell you also based on everything I've done today and we've shared even in the brief time we've been together if I'm done for the day let me ask you am I should I have a problem with that I will still trade as long as the opportunity presents itself let's look at the auction this is our last distribution what are we doing are we gonna leave it so this is our high volume node of this one at the moment this is up coming up into the stops and now we have to look for the squeeze is everybody tracking here's something else to write down lunch time which I'm in Chicago so roughly it's 1230 Central 130 Eastern which is lunch the volume tends to uh, drift lower and we tend to see counter rotations and squeezes when there's less volume algos have an easier time of playing and remember if we know where the stops pile up they know where the stops pile up does that make sense Serve the behavior. This is how I look at this. I look at the consolidation and the volume in the consolidation. Because that's the last auction and we failed. We can come back and check it. Now remember, stops are above these swings too. There's two sides, two edges to the coin as they say. There, But this volume, this is what an auction does. Hold on one moment. Sorry, needed a drink of water. <clears throat> Takes a bit to be chattering for this amount of time. That was a short, hold on. And do you see why? Now, again, not a trade recommendation. This is an auction. Chop, chop, chop. So in other words, it's like a shopper. Too low, too high. What does a shopper do? It goes on sale, they buy. Hold on, I got to You know what it is? We have uh, landscapers running around, and they're kind of noisy. Sorry about that. Okay, so it's an auction. Chop, chop, chop. If you went to the store and you perceived something on sale, you would buy it, right? That's the auction. If you think the price is too high, you would not pay for it. Then the manufacturer the seller would lower the price to attract the buyer oh it's on sale I like that uh, well it was too high here and now we the buyers aren't willing to pay for it the volume of this auction took place right here let me show you again microstructure now these are not trade recommendations I want you to be able to read the structure volume was there up here and volume is here 
outside edge was out here. Okay, you can kind of see the behavior. When we break out of, and this is a distribution or balance area, when you break out, this creates the low volume node. It's not auction. The chop, chop, chop is an auction. When it breaks away, that creates these spaces, and that's what you see right in here. If we break below and come back and we don't take it out, then we have the potential for lower. You can kind of see the sequence. This leaves the high volume behind, which is there, and in this one, it's over here, and there's your low volume edge that separates them, okay? So, basically, this is a short right here, and you'd have your scale, and you know, target might be 3,800 up to you, or you're managing your trade. So let's look at the behavior. So this trade would be done. And it doesn't matter, does it? So two ways to play this. You're sequentially, now the next area to look at, if we get above here, and we certainly can, right? Stops, see stops are trailing behind. So that's what creates the fuel. If we get up in here, then the next area to observe is going to be this node up here. And again, caveat, lunchtime. So let's watch the behavior. This is important to observe. Also important to remember is we're outside of this distribution. So now it's mean reversion around this thing, leaning against this volume and this micro node here. I hope it's not too complicated or, and it makes you nauseous. I'm sorry if it does. But here's the volume. Here's the retracement. Here's the node. Does everybody see what I'm doing here? Here's the volume, right there. Here's the low volume node out here. This is my area for mean reversion. Now it gets a little testy, but let's watch. Too high, breakdown, volume is here, short, helmet. Now you're looking to scale. Okay? So let's see what it does. Got it? Is everybody with me? Can you see it? Tom, do you see the mean reversion that I'm talking about there? Yeah, Avid, uh, the other, yeah, we only have capacity for 100 in Discord. Um, you should go, you guys should go to the YouTube. Um, go over to YouTube. Yes, consolidate. I will try to put the link in here, and I hope I don't blow everything up. It's kind of difficult for me to be doing that. The link is in the text channel if you guys can't get in. Uh, yeah, lag, it's 15 second lag. You know, this is not a trade calling room, you know. So yes. the lag Short is not impulse. material. Yes. Short Check context. Check context. If you're uh, new, by the way, uh, there's a introductory video that'll save you a lot of time. It's uh, if you, in YouTube, it says live future streaming with Tom B. Uh, click on the more and you'll see it in my bio at the end of it it says about tom b and then uh, you'll see a link in there that'll save you months also um and the same thing in the discord chat room where the pin is that'll take you to the top and you'll see my introductory video plus downloads of examples of setups structures and elements and again it'll save you months if this is something you're interested in, like everything, it's different. Uh, it's probably foreign, and uh, but it is something that you may want to learn about. This is about market mechanics and simple. We all think you got to have complexity to be a trader. 
What you need is a trade plan and an understanding of market behavior and then the ability to locate areas to interact with the market that fits a trade plan that involves the key element being risk management first and then it's trade management, structure, targets, and the rest. And all this you can acquire through an understanding uh, that's built around auction market theory and then the tool that represents the behavior of the auction is the volume profile and I lean on the volume because the volume is the truth of the behavior at price not a bar not a candle not an indicator in my opinion and this is just based on my personal experience uh, which uh, if you think you've tried it I've probably tried it too if you've done it I've probably done it you know, I haven't done everything, but I will say I've forgotten more than I remember. Many dead ends, many dark alleys, uh, you know, years spent trying to get something to fit that doesn't fit the market. So, just saying, it's not that I haven't tried. And the worst part of it is, at times, having things work but not understanding the nature of randomness like I do today and accepting it. I came more from a place of needing to know and certainty where in trading there's nothing certain except uncertainty, you see. Write that down. So if you can accept you are in a random environment. Now here, here's an example. Why, why didn't we get to this liquidity? Can you tell me? Yeah. I don't think you can. Well, there's a big iceberg. So, why didn't, and how many times have we seen icebergs buying and we still go lower? So why was this one different, or that one, or that one? You see? Random. So where are we going to go? Lunch, potential squeeze. Let's put the pieces together. We're outside of this distribution. We're still at a downtrend. Counter-rotation. Algos love lunchtime. Outside edge. Where are the stops? Above here. Think like a retail trader. Don't act like one. We have a couple possibilities. Pop to this outside edge. Rotate. Or pop out and come back and start working our way up to the next layer, which is up here. We know that already, don't we? So we can operate in this if we know it. We also know we get more vulnerable as we get closer to these edges. This is a potential short, right? However, you know, not a recommendation naturally because we don't do that. And, you know, we don't want you guys getting hurt naturally. So let's observe the behavior. Now, the idea of the fractals, by the way, for me, was really just a way to kind of get in with minimal risk, because I'm seeing this behavior that we're looking at here takes place in all time frames. So even in the higher time frames, you'll see the same structures. So, you know, that's kind of what, you know, we anticipate. Now remember, low volume area, what's above it? Stops. What created it? This. It's low volume because it didn't auction. This creates the high volume, the chop, 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 right? When you have the low volume, it's not auctioned. That's why we tend to come back into them because they're outside edges. In other words, stops are above here. Now, when we take the stops and we come up into this, I want to observe the behavior because we might be a fade for mean reversion. But again, make note and take note time of day. So let's just be tourists, okay? Remember, what do we have? This. We're above here. This is the next layer up to observe in a higher time frame. So let's just be tourists. Let's see if we can see the buy, um, sorry, that's a sell iceberg. That has some meat on the bone. 
Now, I don't initiate off of these. I observe the behavior. Where am I? I'm in an outside edge, so I want to be very careful, right? Let's go zoom in a little bit, see where our volume is. Where, where did we go? Squeezeteria, right? Outside edge. Isn't that what we were thinking, right? Okay, now let's observe. Notice the delta, the selling. This is a micro auction, not a recommendation. We're just looking. Could do anything, right? Watch the behavior. Watch the exhaustion. We have to see. Now we don't know. I'm in no hurry. I'm just want to, uh, we're tourists, right? We're just watching structure. We're going to watch for it to work and we're going to watch for it to fail. That's all this is. I have alignment, right? See the alignment. Let's watch. Is everybody with me? Is this useful? What's the job? Job number one, scale. Now, look, here's what can happen over here. This is mean reversion. We may only rotate in this little thing right here, you see? It's possible we come back here and leave this. Or come back here. So think about how you might target your trade. Scale, right? Job number one, risk neutral. Then what? Here and potentially here. Let's see. This is mean reversion. Is everybody following me? Is this useful? So let's watch the behavior. So this is the target, this, and it can do anything. Remember, it could come to one of these outside edges and come all the way back. Trend is down. For me, selling only. Just think about Army. We have the longs in full galloping retreat. We have the sellers using counter rotations to sell into. We have retail trader buy stops as the fuel for the counter rotations. Basically, this is how I see it. So then, if we have fuel for counter rotations, and if you look at, it's like a battle, and the army that's advancing is the sellers. If you're long, let's look at it this way. Are you praying for a counter rotation to sell? Does that put a lid on things? Do you want to be a seller or a buyer? Counter rotations or counter attacks. That's when they say, let's send 100 guys in here to uh, give us some time to retreat. Isn't that what a counter attack is? Assuming they don't push the uh, sellers back, it's just a counter attack. I always think of it two, from two sides. I think, okay, who wants to get out of their longs? Does anybody really want to buy? Well, other than squeezes and short covering, what else is there? Downtrend, sell, until it changes. At least that's how I see it. I'm not someone in this context who would go long. If, so, if, if the Federal Reserve wrote me a check and said, go for it, I would put it in the bank. <laughs> And I'd use it to sell more. Why? Context. Trend down. Counter rotations. Opportunities to get aligned with the trend. Is that logical? You see the short. So, you know, this is pretty much what trading is, at least for me. You know, I, and I can tell you if it was up to me, I would do less trades. 
but I don't control the rotations. The mark, you know, the participants and the behavior, the ebb and flow, the market and the rotations are random. So I just want to try to stay aligned. And if I take 50 trades in a day, it's not because I want to. It's because the market tells me to. And I'm just aligning. Uh, when we had less rotations, when I was trading the ES, I don't know when it was, 2015, maybe 2012. I, I can't remember one of those years. We had six point eight point rotations for the day i mean it was a big move i was running six tick stops in that kind of volatility or lack of volatility but i'm giving you a the perspective and it was the same process it was just i was using a shoehorn and a scalpel but my you know my range was much tighter and my risk was much less it's all proportional so nothing was different, just my opportunity was much less. So if I made $200 on a contract, it was like, whoopee, you know. So you, if this, and then it's a matter of statistics. If you, it's all about the probabilities. Uh, if you have low volatility, for me at least, it's then the expectancy. So what is my probability of getting a six tick scale? You see what I'm saying? If the rotations are maybe three points or something. What is my probability of a six tick scale? What is my probability of getting four point profit or five, whatever it is, you know, six? Well, it's all the same mathematically. Then it's a matter of just putting contracts on because you're trading the probability. I hope that's logical. Does that make some sense? Got to take a sip of water. The uh, mean reversion is outside in, and you can do it at any fractal. I lean against this higher time frame. This is the developing daily time frame. But observe what's going on. We're le we left this behind, right? We're now on the outside edge up here. If we keep going up, then, you know, we might be done for now. I have no idea. I'm still a seller. Now, this behavior currently is outside in, but here's this look at this trade we talked about. Right? Trend is down. Shorts are getting squeezed. We're seeing profit taking, and see the stops going off? That's buy stops. That tells me that there's a squeeze. When there's exhaustion, you'll see, you know, by the way, algo behavior, remember? I said, you know, lunchtime, easy pickings. They know where the stops are. So this is showing the potential to push the market up. And this is what insight, you know, this heat map gives you this insight. Now they're pulled. Let's watch what happens from here. Do we fall down under it? Or do they put it under here? See? See how we reacted? This is something you can see with the heat map. Do we hold this level now? Or do we fall under it? Because the thing we don't know is, when these guys came in the book, they didn't trade. But you see how the book responded? Now, look, here's more. See the book response. We can't, I can't do anything with this. Because look, their computer, I mean, these guys, it might be these guys trying to push into the stops. Remember, retail trader behavior, if you were running an algo, if I was running an algo, I'd be using the same behavior I use when I trade, and that is use retail trader behavior as an asset because they're predictable. Just saying. I'm just forgetting the point I was going to make because I'm delirious. You know, I was trading all morning, you know, kind of. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, lunchtime. This is typically when we see counter trend behavior. So I'm going to take a look. I think the question was, do I, about mean reversion? Okay, the mean reversion is pretty much the SVP, and all I'm doing 
is looking at the these are distributions in other words this was created by consolidation you know in all time frames so this one is a consolidation this one this one inside of a bigger one you see the fractal aspect then I'm using this little thing for the same process in this smaller time frame this is fractal so this is a short so now it may only come to here but here's the thing about this risk neutral now I don't think this is a good play only because time of day and I'm seeing a squeeze but I also see some exhaustion I can trade this I'm not saying anybody else should but I could but I want to see more squeeze see now the advantage for me is to get more shorts taken out because if you're if you're holding longs what are you looking forward to do wouldn't it be sell Matt, uh, Central Standard Time, 12 to 1-ish. Uh, Eastern Standard, same thing, 1 to 2. It's just when the behavior, it, it's a volume-based th thing, and it's really that it's easy for the algos to move the market, and they know where the swings are, they know where the stops are. So they're doing the same thing I do when I trade. They're what, they want to use that behavior. Here's the next layer up here, consolidation. There's going to be stops up here. This is the alignment. Remember our friend at 50. And here's the low volume outside edge. This is now a big multi. See this, all this stuff? This is in a larger structure. So I'm still going to be looking for the short. So I'm going to be probing. And I'll get counter rotations along the way. I don't know if it's worth it, you know, to mess around with it. But, you know, this is up to you. See, the thing for me is I can trade these with no problem. Uh, I mean, sure, the problem is taking a stop. That's always a problem, but that's part of trading. Uh, by the way, how do you guys look at losses? Yes, Remember, I said this is a short. Now, what is it? It could just be from here to here or here to here to get scaled. I'm probing. I'm pretty confident that I can do that. Now, I'm not saying anybody should do it because we may only get... You know, but look at the rotation, 35, you know, 45 point rotations. You could be just doing this all day. Trying to get a line for a bigger swing. It's, you know, you could be, I'm not saying this is a plan. I'm just giving you a sense. You could be selling. You could be getting your five points. Scaling, holding. What is it? If you think we're going to be going up, then you can just be like a sniper. Or you're waiting for the bigger move, and this is a function of your time frame and your comfort, and you could be looking back for theirs. What, which is it? And you're, if you say, I don't know, then it's going to be, well, then you need a trade plan. For me, I trade in multiple time frames, so I can look at this and go, okay, you know, I, I, can I can sell this here, but I have to get scaled because that's my, my first job. If I think I want this as a target, well, I got to get scaled up here because we may keep squeezing because my next layer of protection is all the way up here. And again, remember this, right? So, so we are kind of trying to find this outside edge. Well, this is pretty outside edge right here, right? Low volume node, mean reversion. So I'm probing, and that's the thing that's a lot of work with mean reversion. I'm always, it's like, what's my line? There was an old show, what's my line? And some, there'd be two imposters, and uh, there'd be, um, you know, the real person. And they would all, the two imposters, they'd all ask questions. The panel would ask questions. You know, let's say the, the person was a physicist. And there might be a 14-year-old kid sitting there, and, you know, someone with, uh, you know, uh, who looks like a professor and somebody else, right? And they'd ask questions and they'd all, and the real one has to answer truthfully, you know, about different, you know, things, and the others would lie. And, um, and then they'd pick out who the real one was. Well, you know, and that was the game. So the thing is, 
where is the real outside edge? I don't know. My job, if I accept that I will trade mean reversion aligned with the trend, is to attempt to probe for the edge. Because I don't know where it is. And that's just the way it is. And this is trading. The thing that we've done here is the context. I am trading inside of a higher time frame, which is a, trend, a downtrend day, right? So if I know that, then I am looking outside in mean reversion. Does that make sense? Which one was it? Was it this one? Was it this one? You see, that I don't know. That's why risk neutral. That's why risk neutral. That's why risk neutral. Are you guys with me? And again, it doesn't have to do anything. So for me, it's about the risk. I still have this up here. So we'll see. Is everybody with me? <laughs> uh, one of our members in the Traders Lab in the Discord chat room at Bookmap just wrote in there, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to find the outside edge and get risk neutral. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, the value area yeah peter graves <laughs> uh there is no value in a trend day so there is no value area that's valid so just so you're aware but because it, it, the market has no value i mean look at this thing it doesn't know anything it's i mean value is acceptance what we have is multiple distributions going down where the market is auctioned and then left it. So you can look at that. But the developing value area low is nada. In this configuration, trend day, there's no value. Okay? We had value yesterday because we had a value area that was valid and the market traded around and created a belly. You know, this is the distribution. And at the moment, you could call this the accepted price. And this is where we are trading this. Outside edges. Again, where's that outside edge? You know? So that's why this is a short. These are shorts. And let's look at this one. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. See the volume. Let's look. I'm going to open this up again. Let's look in the micro minutia microstructure. I want you to see it. And you'll and here's and what you need to do to learn this is practice. You need software that shows you, you know, I'm going to suggest you use volume profile because you won't see this unless you can look inside it. You see you need to see the volume to un, to be able to use uh the this kind of process. So where is the volume? Let's go look. So I don't know. But here's what I know, outside edge. I'm looking for this, right? And I don't know where it is. I accept that. That's the challenge with mean reversion. So let's look. Now we're looking. Come on. I'm going to open it up. So I'm not doing this. I'm trying to find where's this edge. And I know it's out here somewhere unless we leave this whole thing behind. But I don't know where it is. So I accept I don't know. Now, this was okay right here, right? If you sold it here, you would have got a scale and got taken out. I'm That's part of trading for me. I'm still looking for the outside edge. Here, 53 stops here, 14 stops. Now, I have stop divergence, okay? That's the first thing I'm looking for. I have a little liquidity here, a nice little strike price. That's a maybe, but it's not material, but I observe it. It's important. Here's chop, break. Chop, chop, break up, break down. This is now my structure. 
Here's my exhaustion. This is why I'm a big fan of the stop iceberg detector because I retail trader behavior, right? Remember, low volume, outside edge. So I'm kind of got alignment now. Now I'm looking for the short. So here, 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 these are all potential shorts. Your risk is here, here. This, here. I'm just saying. So you'd be short in here, in here, in here. Stop has to be up here. Where are we trying to go? The other side. So let's see. Let's see what it does. Nine hundred icebergs. Back to the outside edge. Takes the stops out. Nine hundred, six hundred up here. I still don't have a problem with it. And I'm still looking at the short. Do I have a location? Let's see. Watch the behavior. This is your high volume up in here. See it? This. Break. Now, you know, if you got short, your stop still needs to be up here. So we have a lot of volatility. Break, pull back. Here's your high volume right there. So that's I can lean on that, but my risk is up to here. It's not terrible. It's up to you if it fits your trade plan. See? This is volatility, guys. Nothing you can do about it. And, or not trade it if these risk... And remember, what was the target? 22. Well, here's where it gets a little maddening. You see, which one is the right one? But the auction process, that we can see. How it does it, if it does it, random. I hope this is helpful. Yes, short midpoint reversal. Short midpoint reversal. I am not muted, somebody yes. is asking me. Frick, not muted. So what we are really trading at the moment is just is this area of the whole enchilada here let's look at it and remember it can do anything this is the distribution at the moment see it it's rotation this is mean mean reversion so in a downtrend for me it's only selling right I'm certainly not a buyer I mean it can do anything and if someone wants to buy, that's fine. I mean, I'm okay with that. It has nothing to do with me. Um, and at some point, they could there could be a short squeeze. It's Friday, you know. Now, there's another trade we got to remember, guys. It's called the closing swing trade. So that is on the table today. So we just have to remember that. Um, Matt, you didn't need to delete your message. Um, the answer is yes. It's not a recommendation, but until something materially changes, to me, it's a sell short only. But again, that's just me. These are shorts for me. This is sell. There's your pullback to the volume. You can see it right there. Sell. Volume here. Sell. Yes. Is that answer your question, Matt? Yes, short well, if you watch my video which is uh there's a link in here for it um yeah matt you're good just put it in there we're all good this is a trader lab believe me we're all trying to sort everything out we all work together it's a collective and of course i forgot what i was going to say but that's besides the point Oh, there's the uh, the closing swing trade. It is a specialty trade. It's a special team 
like the special teams, like bringing the kicking team on the field, one play. If you watch the video, uh, you you will see it because I show it. Also, if you download my um, handouts, I guess you call them, from my Twitter account if you're on YouTube, um, it's at, not YouTube, I'm sorry, Twitter, at Tom B underscore trades on Twitter. There's a whole mess of stuff I posted uh, over the year, last year, actually, uh, that really explains with detail a lot of this behavior. Uh, and it's the same things I'm doing. Uh, it doesn't go into the microstructure because I really can't, I mean, on those static representations, but they're things you can study. And you'll learn a lot and save a lot of time. Also, the video that's under more in YouTube is really a mini course on uh, auction market theory and volume profile and potential behaviors. So uh, that'll save you a lot of time, too. One thing we do is we all spend a lot of time trying to figure out trading. I don't think you need to waste all that time. Um, unless, of course, you've already got the answer. And then, of course, you are wasting your time. But... Um, if you're not a profitable trader or it just seems chaotic, um, which, by the way, it is, um, but if you can actually organize what appears to be random behavior into a process and a trade plan, and then you can dance with it, just like you're seeing what I'm doing here. This is what I do, and I'm not saying anybody should do it, but I kind of think it, uh, it accomplishes the objective. And I can do this in all time frames. The thing that for me is I'm in this time, the microstructures because of my risk management posture. I have no reason in my mind to risk more than a couple of points on any trade. It allows me to trade multiple contracts because I'm not risking 10 points per contract. I am not an investor. I am a trader. I have a different mindset. And then how often I trade is a function of the opportunity that the market presents, not me. It's a matter of a trade plan. And when the market uh, offers an opportunity that fits my plan, my job is to execute it. That's it. What happens after that is statistics. It's just like my uh, casino analogy, you know, uh, blackjack. Let's say the casino makes six percent net at the end of the year. In between, uh, players are going to come in, leave a suitcase of a hundred thousand dollars. Others are going to walk out with a suitcase of a hundred thousand. When the guy walks out with the hundred thousand, the casino doesn't change the game. They might just uh, give you a slightly bigger ribeye at the buffet, uh, so you bring your hundred thousand because they know. Their job is to get you in the front door and keep you at the table, however they can keep you there or get you there because of that 6%. So it's pushing the dollars through the, the, the mechanism, and it's based on probabilities. Uh, trading is the same process. Uh, pushing the sausage through the, you know, the sausage machine or pushing the dollars through the probabilities. And that's why if you have a vetted trade plan, you understand the probabilities, then it's just your job is to execute the plan and get, the, get those, uh, those tourists in the casino because you work on a 6% net yield or pick a number. I'm just saying is it isn't any one iteration of data. It's the compilation of a random distribution of rotations and outcomes. That's the trading business. I hope this makes sense. You guys do see the short, right? From 40. What part of this doesn't work at the moment? Uh, Quantum, you can just go to the top of the uh, Discord chat hit the pin it'll take you up to the top and you can download all those examples that are that are up on my twitter uh, you know the icebergs i i think for me the icebergs uh i'm getting a question about how to determine what's going on with these icebergs i really don't know what other than 
are they covering or are they initiating? Well, in the downtrend, if I'm looking to sell and I see 900 icebergs, that gets my attention. It's not a triggering mechanism. It is the reaction. It's the same as the behavior with liquidity. What is the reaction, you see? You see how this worked, by the way? 676 buy stops went off. 900 icebergs took the other side of their trade. That's insight right there. Now I have my structure. Chop, 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 micro high volume. There's my break out of the volume. So this is a auction ch -ch 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 break. Too expensive. Test from below. See? Short. Back to this volume. Right here. Short. Or you're just hanging out from here. I mean, you know, this is up to you because this is the outside edge of this. So we were going outside edge, mean reversion, around to here. And you could be done. You know, I mean, it's up to you. For me, I trade structures. So I trade with targets, you know, and I do also have runners. And the runners I manage differently. I always think of the runner like what they call it, the Hail Mary Pass, you know, because I have no, nothing really um Depending. If I have targets, like if I have runners and I have something like this, then I'm good. If I have something like this, then I'm good. Something like this, then I'm good. But once I'm down below here, then I've got to look lower and I might be out in the O zone somewhere. 3,800 is the next one, I think. Yeah. See this? And this might be, we might be done. The low might be in for the day. That part doesn't bother me. Because I can do quite nicely in 20 point rotations. If that's what the market is offering. Does that make sense? Mark liquidity. Mark liquidity. Executed. If there, uh, Spandy, if there's uh, an E, it's an executed iceberg. Uh, so that's what you got here. This is material. The thing, so this is your iceberg sitting here. This liquidity was this guy. Probably. The buy stops, see this explosion up? That's the buy stops. They took the other side. They sold into them. Thanks for playing. That's an exhaustive move. Now, again, and where is it? It's out towards my outside edge. I don't know which, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So anybody who tells you they know, I think they're a fibber. Because to, I think to trade successfully, you must keep your mind in the I know, I don't know, so you're open to change and then there's the narration right remember if this then that if not then what if we get to a previous area and we get through it if not then what then up to the next area then what boom bang and then what chop 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 auction break microstructure excess notice there's nothing going on here two stops going off so that was excess and there's the guys on the other side pullback Price check, short, okay? Now, what do we got here? Let me look again here. I don't even know what we got over here. MQ, short midpoint reversal. Short look, mid -point reversal. let's isolate this one, this structure right here. Now, I know this is, you know, you guys might find this. I don't know how you find it, really. But it's just a matter of if you can't read it, you wait for the next bus. Anybody here ever ride a bus? Ever get on the wrong one? Well, wait for your bus. It doesn't matter. Here it is. Watch. Chop, chop. Break. Now I'm looking for the pullback. If you got short here, your stop is here. Above here, right above here. I don't know if you got stopped out or not, but look at the uh, exhaustion. If I get, st let's say I got one ticked and it happens to me. Other than some choice words, I see this, bang, I'm short again. It, I just deal with it because this is what I'm going for. You see? It's just the way it is. Does that make sense? High volume now is over here. This is high volume over here. See structure. That's against this high volume over here. See the alignment. High volume break below, test from below, high volume, short, scale, helmet. 
over and over and over and over and over if that's how you want to trade I am risk adverse this is my how I have chosen to trade if I want to operate in a higher time frame I'd be looking to get out here and hold remember I said 2022 was the target from up here so that was achieved well now if we get under this I mean we can trade this and come back up or go south I think south is on on the hit parade but I have no idea that's why this is my next target does that make sense I'm trading mean reversion I do suggest, you know, you guys think about the idea of not trading one lots uh, because you then are it really psychologically, I think, potentially hampered uh, because you're not risk neutral. It really changes psychology when you can sit risk neutral. Then you're not impulsing because you're going to be triggered psychologically, mentally all over the place, fight and flight and moving your stop and bailing out at the first counter rotation. I mean, you'll lose your mind. Unless you've unless you've got ice water in your veins, and you uh, you know maybe had a lobotomy and you don't have any uh, emotional responses, so those those fears and those things are tr uh, triggering uh, mechanisms. So for me to alleviate them, I I'd scale, uh, and that's how I manage. Uh, I mean, it manages the risk, but it manages my emotional state too. I still you know get annoyed if I get stopped out after having open trade equity, but. It's better to get stopped out at a scratch than it is to take a loss if you can if you can manage that. It just give it, it protects your account, and that's the first job I believe of a trader is to protect yourself, because that that ensures that you have the opportunity to still be here. Does that make sense? Yeah, I uh, think yeah, please no mems or any anything else in the stream. Um it just takes up space and it's just uh, you know appreciate if you don't uh, post those. Yeah, thanks for removing that. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, the casino analogy I think is pretty good, and so is the army one. You know, the counterattacks, counterrotations. Um, now, under different conditions, I trade both sides of the market. I don't, doesn't matter, you know. I mean, I have set up specifically for different contexts. In this context, for me, there's only one, and that's short. So I can't buy it. I just can't do it <laughs> because I don't want to join the army that's retreat. Uh, that's a, uh, retreating. I don't want to be when they say, "Hey, take ten guys, go up there and and uh, delay, so we the rest of us can retreat." Right? Ah, uh, no, nah, I don't want to be that guy. So that's how I view it. Not specifically, but think of it that way. Counter rotations are being sold by everybody who wants to bail out. Right? See? So think about it. If you're long, no matter who you are, whatever time frame, and there's a counter rotation, are you going to use the counter rotation to get out of your long that you're trapped in, that you're underwater in, and you're yelping? See? It's no different than the army that's retreating who sends some guys in, that, you know, grist for the mill to buy time for the retreat. Same. Same concept. I apologize if it's crude, but you need to think about what's happening here. That's what a counter-rotation is in a downtrend. No 
So what do you do? Well, if I'm the advancing army and I get and there's a counterattack and I pull back a little bit from the counterattack, once they're exhausted and they're picked off, I'm now advancing. That's what this is. That's why I'm I'm looking at these counter rotations as opportunities to get realigned with the long retreat and the seller advance. Logical? And if this is helpful, please, guys, thumbs up in the uh, YouTube. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, Matt. Thanks, uh, Stock Lounge. By the way, speaking of stocks, this process works in all markets. Futures, crypto, stocks, everything. It's generic because the what makes the market do its thing? Well, it's an auction. And this process, you can take it and trade anything with it. You want to trade pork bellies? Go for it. Huh, not so much. But let's just say, if you really like bacon, you could trade it. Uh, that is out there. That is resting. Uh, that 138 selling icebergs out there, That's they're hanging out looking to get filled. And uh, that's what that, that is. That's resting out there. And if they um, they can move it, and this what this is allows us to see the iceberg that's waiting in the wing. So this is sitting out there. Interesting, isn't it? So these are executed icebergs, you know. So this guy wants to sell. 70 are going off here. He's hang Now he may never he may cancel if he disappears or he can move it up or down, right? So we'll watch what he does. But he's Now the thing with an iceberg, he's showing 138. That's what the reason they call it an iceberg, it's the tip of the iceberg. We have no idea what's under that tip. But they have to show some I don't know what the percentage is. You know, there's, there's a, an amount they have to show. I don't know. I, and so don't ask me on that one. I don't know. But um, they have to show. But that there's probably much more under the surface. That's why it's an iceberg. You know, think Titanic, you know, under the under the surface. So let's watch and see if we can read what goes on here. Let's watch this. Oh, you were asking about the closing swing trade. If you're interested in the closing swing trade, download the uh, examples. If you're in Discord, in the Discord chat, it's up on top. Uh, it's pinned along with the video. actually shows it. Uh, if you're in YouTube, go to my Twitter account, uh, at Tom B underscore trades. You'll see a ton of stuff in there that will give you a really... I think good foundation and also in the video that's in YouTube down under the more or in discord pinned up on the top I actually go through it I think so you can kind of understand what that is about observe the behavior Eight hundred. S and P sell I C E five hundred thirty. Trade E S M to C M E arithmetic by three hundred seventy five. Yes. S and P sell I C E five hundred one. See the volume. This was a short, wasn't it? See the volume. This is a short, wasn't it? So you. See the volume with the exhaustion. Short, wasn't it? Is everybody tracking? Don't create trades. Let a trade come to you. Let a trade 
winning the full trade for him. I don't follow what you're saying, Trader Bish. Um, so, Bishop, would you clarify your question about the risk management process? He sells stock 257. So, this is a short. And now, you know, helmet. Did I, uh, Bish, did I answer your question? I'm not sure. Would you uh, let me know? And if this is helpful, please uh, give a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, Bish, I, I, you, you, if the, is this your first time here, Bish? If so, then you need to spend a little more time, okay? Uh, actually, it doesn't. Um, what the goal is, is to get risk neutral. And then runners. The targets are laid out based on the structure and what's available. Then it's a matter of once you're risk neutral, you can give the trade the room to work. If you get taken out, the worst that happens is you scratch. So you're protecting your account. Then it's targets and, and trade management. And time frame. And since we're in mean reversion, you know, it's going to be bouncy because we're trying to get to outside edges. Then it's the fractals inside if you want to trade inside in a shorter time frame. Does that clarify a little bit for you? So this is a short with a stop above here. It's a couple of points. I personally have no reason to risk more than that. Then I'm only looking to cover the distance from here to here, which would be covered under these swings. And then it's trade management. And I'm fine with that. I mean, that's just me. And I'm just showing you what I do, you know. So a, a small trader can operate in this see it isn't it, what it is is if we know statistically and this is what the key to this is if we know or you know or whoever knows look at this 1900 icebergs you see if we know statistically the probability and this is over a sample size of getting a scale and getting risk neutral based on the time frame and the rotations is 65 60 pick pick a number just saying whatever that individual traders number would be that high probability allows for the next trade then it's the risk it's the management if you're in this operating in this you could actually be doing very nicely even with a two lot so think about the statistics if i have a high probability of risk neutral and the rotations the other part of this is the harmonic it's 10 points, then how does that not work for me? I could just be trading 10 point, 20 point rotations with a two, three point stop. If I have a, let's say a 60% probability or more of getting risk neutral, you see? So that's where the statistics come in. If, if that was my game, and let's say I only am a two lotter, let's just say hypothetically, if I have a, a um, probability, a, an expectancy that is positive, then why wouldn't I trade 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 5 and 5, 10 and 10? I don't have to do more than that. It's, again, a function of probability and the fractal and the rotations. 
at least that's the way I see it. I'm sure I'm not correct, but this is what works for me. I'm just saying. Uh, now, I don't trade two lots, but I'm just saying. See the iceberg? I'm just saying, though, that's what, if we're depending on our experience and our level and comfort with risk and trade management, that's why I trade in a fractal. And that's why my first uh, obstacle or uh, job per my trade plan, and everybody has to create their own trade plan, right, uh, is risk neutral. Because it affects my psychology, and it also protects my account. When I take a full stop, fine. It's the cost of production. It's overhead. I'm certainly not concerned about get, taking a stop, other than it, I don't like it. But it's just cost of production. At least that's the way I frame it mentally for myself. And again, this is just one person, one trader's way of uh, approaching it, you know. And I'm sure there's better ways. I'm certainly not going to say there isn't. Jana, I uh, put, um, I don't, I click right here in book map, I can execute on the screen. So I basically have my mouse and I'm just sort of watching it. So I'm right here like this, and I just click, click the mouse, and it puts it right in. Yes. So that's how I execute. On-screen execution with the Global Plus, it's really, it's really neat. In other words, uh, here, let me show you. You know, so, you know, so you can execute off the chart or off a dome, however you want to do it. You know, I use brackets, you know, so... If, if I was, I don't trade off of this, but if, uh, you know, so, you know, you adjust your stops, so they're OCO type orders, because I want, I want to be server side. Uh, I never want to be computer side. It used to be with strategy orders, you know, they were controlled by your computer. I'm not interested in that. So anyway, with this, you can, you know, adjust your size, uh, or you could just, you know, do whatever, you know. So, Anyway, answer your question, this is how I execute. So if this was my high volume area, I'd be clicking my limits. You see, right up in here. So, and I'm just saying for an example. And then these would be laid out, you know, my targets. And then th since they're individuals, so if each one, so let's say I'm trading, well, units of two. So th this would be set to two and it'd be click, click, click would be three two lots and they each can be then uh moved independently so i'd adjust my stops and then i'd move my scale where it needs to be to get risk neutral and then my targets and then manage my stops does that explain that and then do replays you know and the way to kind of get the idea of this, what I do, and I, I still do this, I on the weekend, I do replays. And to make it even more challenging, it's challenging enough, but I don't know the, con I pick a random day, I don't know the context, I know nothing. And it forces me to under, you know, to work with the developing context. And then I try to read, you know, the way I read and get aligned with it and try to see what's going on. So I don't know what happens in the ETH. I don't know the higher time frame. I know nothing. I don't even know what happened the previous day. I know nothing. It forces me to concentrate on reading the structure, the microstructures, you know, MBO data, you know, what's going on with the stops. And uh, Bookmap records all of this. And then you can uh, play it back. And you can speed it up. You could do it on half speed to see the nuance. Uh, and what I do is I run it at four times. And the reason, I, and I'm not saying you start with that. You start real time or even a little slower so you can see it. Because what I'm doing is it's no different than an athlete going out on the court and practicing. What I'm doing is I'm training and reinforcing uh, subconscious competence. Because this happens quickly. So I need to see it intuitively like this I need to see it intuitively so and that only comes from practice and repetition so I always think of myself in a way like an athlete in the sense that I better be practicing I better be watching those films of the competition you see what I'm saying I better be working 
because this is my career, my job. My job is to get better, try to get that extra one or two ticks per trade. Um, all that is part of it. So it's never done, and I always want to do better. I always go over my, my day. I look at what I didn't do right. And there's things I do that I wish I did better because it costs me. But over the sample size, you know, because there's, remember, there's no perfection in trading. And that's the thing we have to accept. We can't be perfect because the market is imperfect. There's this random aspect to it, you know. So if, if we accept randomness, then all we can try to do is get aligned and accept that along the way, you know, we're going to take stops and pay for the privilege. Cost of production. That's just the way it is, you know. Anyway, I hope that clarifies things a little bit. Zimbru, did I answer your question about the stops and the, uh, and the limit orders and all that? Did I answer that for you, Zimbru, on how to enter the orders? Um, well, for me, JL, what's more important, stops or icebergs? I understand what stops are. It's retail trader behavior. Icebergs, um, you know, they're in a different time frame than us. I mean, think about now. Look, a thousand ice. Now, this is a short here, not a recommendation. Alignment, thousand icebergs, retail trader behavior exhaustion. You know, so it's not a recommendation. I'm just saying is, and I'm just saying this kind of off the cuff. See the behavior here. So I've got exhaustion. I've got icebergs. I mean, we could still come up. We're in a high volume area, and we can still come up to the other side. So I'm aware of that. But it would be an area I would observe. I'm not suggesting. See, we took out this swing. We can still rotate higher. You know, no way to know. But look where we are. See this consolidation up here. So. There's volume in here. So let's observe it. VPOC just shifted. That's very material here. That says right now we this is the area that's being accepted. That means everything above us is too high. So now let's observe. Let's observe the behavior. See how the icebergs operate? There's another thousand. So they're selling here, but you can't. I I do not initiate off them. I want to see the behavior. This is important here. So we want to observe. Do we mean revert and then come back here from above? Oh, look at this guy, nice. Or do we break below here and come down to the other side? So this is what I'd be looking for in here. But this can be a dangerous area because it's right in the middle so you can still come up so let's just watch this okay and remember these aren't any trade recommendations chop 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 here's your volume let's watch it okay so microstructure there's your volume let's see we can blast up here or it's a short from here so let's see Of uh, the stop on the chart. Well, I use a bracket order. Um, the question uh, Zimbra is asking, he's new to book map and how do you place a stop? Well, I use bracket orders. I don't have time to be fiddling around, you know, because if I have to do that, put a stop, do this, do that, put limits. I, meanwhile, I want to be moving my stops because I, you know, keep them a little bit outside when I first put them on. I grab them, risk management first, and I've got to move my limit order. You know, I just want to match my limits, so I've got to adjust those orders. So I'm not doing that. I'm using the bracket, so it just throws them out on there, you know. I mean, I'll show you. Here, let me, you know. I'll just show you what it looks like. If, if you're not familiar with those, you probably are, but. 
So, or I'll just throw one in here. There, see, so the stop is now up there, and the limit would be over here. It's not a trade. I'm just showing you how the how it works. So then I can just grab this, move it, right? Grab this, move it around. You know, whatever. Okay, does that make sense? Maybe I can get a hamburger out of this, huh? So that's how it works, and but what happens with also is good with this. Besides being able to, you know, move them around, so it's all done at the same time. I don't have. This is why I use the bracket. And here's the other advantage of this: their server side. So if your internet goes down, um, you know, whatever happens, somebody trips over the court at the exchange, um, you know, you're you're in good shape. So, you know, you're safe. Back in the Stone Age. If your internet went down, you're in big trouble. So, Zimbra, did that help? So, that's how that works. So, this is where you'd be executing. So, I, I like this because this is how I execute. I, I'm like this with my pointer, you know. And as soon as I see the behavior, you know, I'd be bang. Yes, four. Long consolidate. I, just one, I mean, and there's domes. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can have a dome if that's how you're used to operating, you know, execute right on the dome. I like on the chart because I want to be, you know, I'm kind of like in here with a, with a scalpel. You know, I'm trying to look at the minutia. So that's just how I do it. And I'm using the microstructure as that I can see in the uh, chart volume profile. I hope that makes sense too. So I, you know, I like look at this micro volume. What's going on right here? Right here, it's gonna maybe come back to here. We'll see. It's not a recommendation. I'm just saying is what's the behavior, right? So let's see. Don't know. And again, I, I this is not my trade, but I'm saying is I look at the behavior. So for me, I have nothing to do here. But the potential is to come back to the point of control, the POC, right there. It's really mean reversion. You see it? Oh, okay. I guess, I was just thought you were asking how I do it. Thanks, George. See, I'm okay with a five-point move, you know, um, because my stop is so close that I can, you know, I can get my scale and get risk neutral. So I'm just saying is that's my trade plan based on my psychology. Remember these guys sitting up here? Let's see what happens with them. Watch. Let's watch the behavior here, okay? Should be, might be interesting. Now remember where we are. We're thinking mean reversion. So we want to observe behavior. Watch this here. This is where this liquidity is. You can actually see, are they adding? Are they pulling? Do they get taken on? That's part of the, which, you know, is helpful. So this could be a potential short and you're still looking for mean reversion. If that's part of your trade plan. I'm only showing you what I do, guys. I'm not suggesting anybody do this. That's why these are not recommendations or anything. It's process, and then it's up to you to determine the time frame you might want to operate in. Because this works on all time frames. 
I'm just operating in a short time frame. The other part of it is if I trade a higher time frame, I'm using the same process to get involved in the market. Remember 3850, we were short up there, right? Well, you know, if that's how I want to operate, I can, uh, but I've been trading many times inside of that. So I'm trading inside of the higher time frame fractal. That's all. If it was also my plan, it'd be on at 30, you know, and I'd be what? I'd have rode the thing all the way down. That's also, if that's your time frame, that's fine, you know. Tom, sorry you feel that way. Tom, so you understand why I say that? There are others. Um, okay, I understand. They're, they're in the Discord chat room. We're in real time. And, uh, you know, when we have, um, you know, new participants coming in all the time. And uh, I want to be sure that they don't think that we call, I call trades because I don't. So, yeah, I, pre I understand your comment. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the POC is the VPOC, uh, Jay. It's what you want to call it. Point of control, volume point of control, same thing. Uh, the, actually, the point of control is from market profile, you know, but I didn't want to take up the space. I guess we could put a V in front of it. Now, remember, we have something called the closing swing trade, right? Does everybody remember that? Didn't forget, did you? Okay, we want to watch 50. Short watch the behavior. Short midpoint reversal. MQ, short midpoint reversal. Short midpoint reversal. Remember what we said 50 was? Does anybody remember? It was so long ago. It was an obstacle, right? Isn't it interesting? Yeah, but what else was it? It's the low volume node. But let's go back. Remember I said you got to mark this. It acts like support and resistance. Where is the thing? So, oh, here. This. This is resting. Resting liquidity for me is more meaningful. It traded out. We pulled back, checked it from below. It was a short. Seems so long ago, right? Yes, now what? come back to it it's an over under over under alignment to an outside edge remember we don't know reaction short anybody have a problem with this is this enough range what about my risk reward is this going to work I just want to know what you think and again it, it's got to be your plan not mine you know I'm sure there's a lot of you who think what I do is ridiculous and like unconscionable. And I get it. It's not about what I do. It's about process and finding whatever that is that you can do and execute consistently. That's all this is about. There's not a right way or a wrong way to trade. There's only the way that works for you. And that's that. And that's what this is, mean reversion. Where are we going? Here. Maybe. Does that make sense? My chart settings expert, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, yeah, uh, Franklin, um, 
attend the book map uh, streaming sessions. There's there every day from uh, 10 a.m. <clears throat> I'm sorry. There goes the voice. Hold on. You know, it takes a little bit to talk like this for five hours. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, where was I? Oh, Bookmap has a great education all over the place. Go to the Bookmap website, and you can just look up any of this information, like the dome, and you can get you can see it. Uh, my purpose really is to show you how I use the tool, but how you can incorporate it. Uh, and what insight really and and it's really about this is my trading process um and i just really want to show because i don't think um many traders understand auction market theory they're not exposed to it because it's not usually where traders start you know we all start in the same place and uh if we survive long enough maybe we get a chance to develop and, and get better insight um but we all kind of start doing the same thing, and statistically, that outcome's not so good. So, uh, and it's really by a lot of requests from a lot of traders that I ended up doing this. Um, and it just happens that Bookmap was a tool that I found about 2015, I think, or so, when it first came available. Because the dome, I was not skilled in reading the dome. When I started trading, there was no dome. There's nothing. I mean, I'm telling you, we didn't have a dome. If you wanted to place an order, uh, you wrote it on a ticket, and then you timestamped it, picked up the phone, and called your guy who would uh, signal it into the pit. So, you know, that was it. So dome was not part of my evolution. Um, so it just wasn't something, you know, that I, that I uh, worked yes. with. So I wanted something, but I didn't want to be staring at the limit order book and trying to remember where liquidity was or the changing in the behavior. So when I saw, when book map first came out, it was the heat map and the volume dots. So I started, you know, from that, I kind of, you know, went from there and I said, oh, this is great. Now I've got a tool where I can see the book moving around. And I can see algo behavior. All this meant something to me. But I, trying to look at the this, the limit order book, it was like, there's no way. I mean, are they adding? Are they pulling? I mean, all that kind of behavior. I can see it now here. So that's why Bookmap for me. And then over the years, you know, Bookmap evolved and developed, you know, and then when MBO data became available, we could actually see retail behavior with the stops and then the iceberg. So it just sort of evolves. So for me, it's a very important part of what I do. And my trading would be really different uh, without it. Now, I'm u trading the same process I have for years. I mean, I've been trading this way for a long time, but I could never see inside. You know, I, in other words, the ability to see retail trader behavior, uh, that's really key for me because then I can read potential exhaustion better. And then I'm using the structures and the volume, you know, uh, for you know, f consolidations, which is what this is, and what it says. Auction market behavior, what is this saying? Well, if we understand the auction, we know what this is, what creates it. And then it's a matter of whether or not, you know, how the beha what the behavior is at these locations. So that's that's kind of what's going on with this. Um, we're in the power hour, as they call it, 2 p. Central Time, 3 p. Eastern Standard Time. This is where we might, this is where, now this might have been our squeeze. I don't know. Or we could have a very outsized short squeeze. The key to this trade right here is where we went. Because you guys do remember, I said, remember this one. So I mark them. That's the short. Now... If they squeeze through here and it gets explosive, it could be Friday, end of the week, retail trader behavior. This is what we're looking at. If And algos understand this. Now, the way this the closing swing trade potential exists, it's based on retail trader behavior, which is don't go home short if you're a day trader. Well, there's a lot. Now, if we don't get back over this, it's not happening. 
if we get over this, we could see quite a squeeze. And the thing about the squeeze is it's lit up. It's kind of like gasoline. And the squeeze would happen above here. And then you'd see all, you, and the way it looks is buy stops like 800, 600, 1,000, you know, big squeeze, like what we've been seeing on the way down, right? So that's what it would look like. Remember, this is our target on the short, by the way. So, you know, do you see this here? Now, this is the short. This is the target. And then a runner. And if we come up above all this, then fine. Or you're running a trade management scheme, and that is a different conversation. Okay? Or you're out when it comes above here, and then you put it back on again. Too much for you? It's not your trade, and it's not your plan. I'm just telling you what I do. So. Does anybody have a question? We doing all right? Uh, Pat, just go to the Bookmap website. There's like a knowledge base. There's so many videos. There's educational course. There's so much stuff. Um, and, you know, but you can look up what you're interested in, the dome, what, how does the dome work, how do you place orders, I mean, anything. They got so much there. I almost think it's too much sometimes. But anything you, you even think about, you could probably find. And if not, there's great support there that will, you know, give you, you know, the input that you're looking for. Whoops, get back here. So there's our target right ahead of this thing. I'm okay with 50 down to 31. What about you guys? You could do this with a two lot. I'm just saying. And I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying you could. Yeah, Stock Lounge. Thanks. Um, by the way, if this is helping you guys at all and you think it's worthwhile over there in YouTube, uh, please give a thumbs up. Uh, also, if you, I don't know if, you know, there's, if you look under more, which is somewhere down below, uh, there's a, where it says about Tom B, there's a link. In fact, let me just throw it in here for you guys. Um, let me see if I can get it in there. It's a intra foundational video. It'll save you a few months, <laughs> maybe, if you're not familiar with auction market theory and value profile. And there's examples of uh, actual setups and trades that I've uh, taken in there. And, you know, it, it, and it's all just for education, you know, but it's something that might give you something to think about, you know. Uh, and that's all this is, give you something to think about. And then, and it's... The thing that happens, at least for me, beliefs. Uh, you really got to believe in trading. Um, your process, I should say. Your trade plan in order to step in front of the uh, bus, you know. Because your all your emotions are triggered, you know, when you're trading. So it, if you don't believe in it or it's random, your behavior is random, you're going to be fearful. Now, I my fear is triggered every time I put a trade on because I don't want to lose right? I mean, that's built in. But my confidence comes from my experience and my statistics. So over time, I know, you know, that things tend to work more often than they don't. And I tend to get risk neutral more often than I take a full stop. That's it. That is what gives me the ability that if I put a trade on, I get a scale and get taken out. I'm looking again because I'm just not quite in the right location. The auction process, the behavior, though, has not changed. I'm trying to find an outside edge for this move. Does that make sense? I accept it. By the way, stock lounge, do you trade? trade it's a great question here. Do you trade stocks or futures? JL, you're saying retail stops above the VWAP? I don't even know where the VWAP is. I can't find it on my chart. It's so far behind. 
Notice the mean reversion. You could just, if you want, you could just trade the one side of the mean re Oh, there's the VWAP. 38.64. Oh, my goodness. I had to go look for it. <laughs> JL, I don't think the VWAP is on in the plan today, but I have no idea. That's pretty far. I mean, today's a real outsized day, you might notice. Not so good for the 401k, but hey, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a saying, get used to it. That's what my wife says to me. That's encouraging, too. Uh, stock lounge, did you, do you trade stocks? Now, Franklin, when you say uh, you trade S&P 500, do you mean futures or the SPY? Um, which, which one are we talking about here? Are we talking options, Franklin? Uh, I mean, just let me know what, if we're talking stocks, uh, you know, ETFs. Where, oh, the SPY? Yeah. Um, well, you need DX feed, and uh, you'd want the Global Plus for all this stuff. Now, there's no iceberg and stop data available. This is only for CME, so futures. Um, but you'd see the liquidity, you'd see the order book. And stocks, I think, and uh, SPY and those, uh, they're cleaner. I mean, those guys throw, you know, and you'll see how many orders are in there. You know, so if if you're trading Tesla, there might be 10,000 or so. I, and I'm only making the number up. But it's huge numbers are really sitting. And the market will tend to go trade them. And then, and then you see the behavior. I mean, stocks are different, I should say, the SPY and the Qs, you know, but it's the same. In the auction process, it's all the same. It's just the movement, the volatility, the leverage, right? So if that's your interest, you know, go over on the uh, website. Um, go, and you can see it. VPOC, uh, David, the, um, you're asking me how to set up VPOC, you mean on Bookmap or where? Well, uh, Spandy, the uh, icebergs are only, right now the data, it's called market uh, by order, MBO data is available through Rhythmic and it's only for CME. Uh, futures at the moment but uh, you could definitely work without it we don't, you know I suggest you do they actually have uh, a book map you can I think uh, there's like a demo that uh, you can look at I think for crypto or something I mean you can get the feel for the mechanics of this you know and there's all kinds of videos um, just go on the website rummage around over there so the short, right, outside in, first target. You're running another one, hold. That's it. This is not complicated, I don't think. I mean, the real location, random. I accept that. If I put the trade on, that's why risk neutral. So I can afford to get taken out because mean reversion, which is what we're trading. This is mean reversion. This is what this is, right? So if we're trading mean reversion, we're trying to get to the outside edge, and that is an area. It's not a wall. And outside edges have stops. See, that's the other part of it. So we're looking, and we don't have to get to it. We can maybe get here or there, you see? Don't know. Watch the behavior here. We can come around or bounce right off this and continue down. Let's observe. So let's watch the behavior. We're watching the volume here. Here's a micro low volume area. Here's volume up here. Let's watch. See the check. Watch the behavior. This still has the potential to come down. Price check in aisle three. Right here. The market went too high. Low volume. Down. Return. Does this look familiar? 
the pull back to the high volume fractal my friends fractal my friends fractal right here fractal all this is at the moment and these again you know this is just for tourists right is the pullback to the high volume is this any different than the pullback to the high volume right there fractal pull back to the high volume in a higher developing time frame fractal now it can come around you know I don't know but look at the behavior let's see if we can interpret in a fractal now you know what fractals are right I mean I know you guys already know it's like those little Russian dolls but chop 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 pull back to the high volume micro high volume lower chop 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 pull back to the higher time frame high volume potentially lower now I don't know what it'll do but I'm trading inside multiple time frames let's observe and remember every trades random um, the C We have liquidity at 17, so we might get over here, look in the book, about 350 contracts, no idea. And then we have the low of the day, right? Don't know. We're above here, so this might be all we got in the tank. And here's the low volume node, right? Now we can do anything. And what my plan is, is to try to get down to the other side of, the, of this. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. See, I work in the, uh, I know I don't know, and I have no control. So all I control is my plan and my execution. I have no control over the rest of it. So I gave up on trying to control the market. And I also gave up on predicting the market. Uh, because, you know, that's random also. So I remove all of those needs like the need to be right, the need for any of this. All I have is the potential that's created by the behavior of the participants and the structures that those behaviors create. And that's, what's in, that's what auction, the auction is all about. So, see this outside edge. This is mean reversion. There was our, our line in the sand that we put in here whenever it was, early, earlier, much earlier today came up there checked outside back to the mean primary target next tertiary is out somewhere out here yeah. and again no idea and that's okay see for me I'm I look at what I perceive to be the higher probability behavior and that's mean in mean reversion it's back to here see then whatever So on this trade, I could either be trailing a runner for this or be flat. I'm and then I'm going to say to you, does it really matter? To me, it doesn't matter. If this was useful, please give the thumbsy up. Yes. Yeah, Jade, thank you. You have a good weekend. Thanks for being here. Watch the behavior. Remember, this is our target. Now, there's multiple ways of dealing with this. If you want to keep it simple, this is it. Finito. And those of you who have been following me in uh, Discord for a few months now, this is the primary objective because it has let's call it high probability I don't have a statistic but it's mean reversion and the point of mean reversion is the outside edge in what happens here don't know and where's too low well in theory coming back out here if it doesn't do it then that's okay that's you know we may come up here check come down here we may come up here squeeze and take everybody out and come up here nobody knows 
I can suspect what it might do, but I don't know what it'll do. Let's watch. Watch. See the behavior. So let's watch her. And these are not trades. We're too close. I Remember, mean reversion, I'm sitting on the mean. So this could push to the outside edge. The discipline in mean reversion is trying, in other words, the volume that creates these reversals, that we're using the retracement to the volume. But in this time frame, I want to try to do, I'm doing it a little different. I'm going outside in. In the microstructures, I'm going back to the high volume for continuation down. Because I'm reading this consolidation as a structure, and this is not, I'm just giving you an example. Okay, just <laughs> just don't get carried away. Um, that the volume in here, if it, we repel from it, it is saying that the auction that took place in this little structure that the high volume is too high and we're going to come back to another structure. So that's what, if we bounce off that volume, now we can come out here, right? We could do anything, right? But this is the, the higher volume attractor that pulls the market back to it. But the trade is outside in. When you get cute, you're taking more risk because this is the fair price. The market may may go up to try to find what's unfair and then revert back. So getting involved here is not my trade. But I want to show you behavior. Does that make sense, by the way? Is this logical for you guys? Johnny, when it comes to success rates on anything, this is where you do the work. It's, it's statistical and uh, it's really a function of how you execute trade management, et cetera. The thing to do is you got to study these um, and understand them. You got to understand why the market does this. And then you need to compile statistics. Uh, and that's part of a trade plan. So if this looks interesting to anyone who's you know following here, the work you do in trading is to vet ideas and find your level of comfort with them you know um, that's really kind of what trading is about is observe if you see something that's interesting think about it go huh what makes this happen why does the market tend to do this what what created this you see and what is what is mean reversion and depending on your understanding of what it is statistically uh, then you can build you know, get ideas and then build plan around it. And that's really all we do. Uh, everybody has a different plan. Everybody, you know, we all do our own thing. But I think that if we, if I show you guys what I do, you can get some ideas out of it. Observe. One stop, 89, one liquidity, volume. Let's just watch and see what happens over here, okay? Little high volume node right there, microstructure, potential short back to here maybe, right? Do you think it might be? I have no idea. Let's see what happens. Chop, chop, break high, one stop, break low, volume sitting here. Let's observe it. We don't want it over 40 now, if it's going to do it. Are you guys tracking? Just an example. And remember, we're just cruising here, right? So we either break out of this and zip up in the closing swing trade, or we revert. It's one or the other.
Well, Tom, I look to the left to see where the volume was previously. And then I look in the microstructure, like this one here didn't work, right? And, uh, but I don't do anything here in this condition. I will in different conditions. Um, but there's two things that we have going on here. One is mean reversion, right? Okay. But we have the closing swing trade. And the closing swing trade is a retail trader squeeze, right? That can get outsized. So we had two, we have two scenarios here. And I can't, you know, I don't know what, which one. I do know the end of day uh, trade, right? You have to be careful with these because all you might be seeing is counter rotations and then continuations because we don't know. We're still at an outside edge and this still would be the target. There's just no way to know. Here's the divergence again, you see? Here's the volume. You can kind of see it there. So with this, and you have to be really quick with this, you'd have to execute in here, stop above here, target here, you'd have a scale. So, you know, if you're trying doing this, you take a stop, real world. Here, you'd have a short scale, risk neutral, trying to come back here again. And, and like any specific trade, it, it's just one. So I'm just, you know, sharing again, I'm just sharing an idea. Using the tools, seeing the exhaustion, seeing the break, seeing the check, seeing the check, short, scale, stop, target. You could do this all day. Yeah, and you're going to take some stops. Why? This is the real world. If you're allergic to stops, then, you know, then the trading is not probably the right business to be in because we all have cost of production. And that's how, in my opinion, you see losses. If Assuming you have a, a, a statistically valid approach to the market, that each trade is random. If you have an, what's called an edge, over time, the edge shows up in the distribution, the random distribution of data points. So for me, I want to get risk neutral, and then I, I don't know what will happen after that. If I, get, if I get taken out, I'm out. Okay, fine. Uh, this is my target. And then it's a couple of things. Trade management, where are you out? right here do you scratch see what I mean that's different that's a different animal or you just keep your stop here and let it take you out and scratch because you're going to sit through the rotation for this there's the unknown right and that's a, a function of trade plan let's watch the volume right here Watch the algos, see if they pull. Then you can see the algo behavior, right? This guy, we want him to get out of the way. Otherwise, and if he comes up, he's going to push. He's going to push. So let's watch. See the algo? That messes with this trade. We want to see somebody come down or else they're going to squeeze this. See? See the algos? That's life in the fast lane. There's nothing you could do about that, right? Except this is the short. So, how do you manage the trade? Different topic. The trade fails here. Or, you're managing the trade and you're trading very tight. And you're out here or you're out here up to you see that's a different as i say a different conversation our volume is sitting up here this so this is an area to observe let's watch this is a low volume node in this micro time frame potential rotation here in the micro time frame if this holds there's our structure where it fails in the micro time frame this is our low volume area up here so we have to see the behavior come out here then fine done trades done i don't have a problem with that alpha absolutely yes 
So this is all noisy, and we're still looking potentially for this closing swing trade. So I'm thinking from two sides here. I'm thinking micro, rotational, because I'm a day trader, and I'm also thinking an outsized squeeze that could be lit up. If we get over the 50, things can get pretty hairy to the upside, and it'll be buy stops. That is another potential opportunity to observe, right? We have been talking about it. So let's see. Closing swing trade potential. And of course, everybody, it's for education. And the guys in Discord, you're in real time. If anybody grabs onto this thing, I'm coming for you. Because remember, this is not a trade calling room. Observe the 50, and you know there's a, tons of fuel above there. Let's watch this, okay? We can accelerate here. There's your VWAP. Oh, there it is. Here's our low volume area. These are not that material in this environment. We can blow through them because of stops. This is a weak outside edge structure. We just have to keep a helmet on here and be very observant. Okay? So let's see. The closing swing trade is something I worked out over, let's just call it many years, uh, because it was something I observed, you know, and I, and, and part of anything you observe in the market is kind of trying to figure out, well, why, why does something happen? Well, I'm a big fan of retail trader behavior because we all act like a herd, right? Well, what are they going to do it on Friday if they're short? Cover. And what is above us? buy stops fuel where are their stops vwap that means i at this under these conditions do not go near it where else are they the mid i think the vwap what am i going to be looking for i'm going to look for a big splash of stops notice the stops are starting to get higher and i'm going to look for retail trader behavior where they keep their stops right here and then I'm going to be looking and the again guys don't even think about it I'm going to be thinking about looking for large icebergs potentially taking the other side and I have no idea about any of it other than it can be violent and that works both ways yeah <laughs> the violence because we have the potential to have a violent move so let's observe we're out here look where we are this is a key location this is a key location outside edge I'm a tourist I have nothing to do let's see retail trader stops are up here I'm conscious of that so this is still mean reversion but see where we went now I'm not I'm just saying I'm looking for one specific behavior if it doesn't happen it doesn't matter to me and this is kind of rough right here because we didn't get you know now here's your micro high volume right there you see it right in this structure break there's no pullback the next area is here but then your risk is up above here you see so this doesn't fit my game plan so my job is not to take the trade even though the VPOC is the target now because where would I get into this is everybody with me there's nothing wrong with this except it didn't fit my plan and part of surviving in the trading business is following your plan and and not now not being remorseful that you didn't jump on it well I'm not supposed to jump on it I'm supposed to wait for my trigger, which is defined. Okay? So, but the target, if it works, is mean reversion. Where? Here. And then again, no clue. But to see the mean reversion, outside edge. I'm looking for a closing swing trade, which is squeeze. So I'm not necessarily on this, but if I had a trigger... I would take it 
if I had my trigger. I didn't have it. And I'd be scaled. And if I get taken out, I'm fine. Because it, it's just one trade, right? Because this is worth it. I'd yes. be If I had a trigger, I would be risk neutral, and I'd be going for this. 30, 20-point trade. I'm good with that. If it doesn't happen, I'm out. I'm good with that. If I have a trade management process, I might already be out. Or I would have my scale and I would scratch. It, it, it's a, See, that's a, a function of your trade plan. But I'm hanging out. I didn't get my trigger, so I didn't do anything. Stops are sitting up in here. So I'm looking for my next trade, which, as I mentioned, is magically the closing swing trade which of course I'm only suggesting because it's potential market behavior and retail trader behavior so let's observe oh rain you're good yep Yeah, well, we developed the uh, hero indicator, uh, Rainier. I was part of the beta group on that. You know, for spot gamma. S yes. So let's observe. Let's watch now. Remember, retail trader behavior, VWAP. It, it, Okay, watch it. A thousand stops at the VWAP. Thanks for playing. Now we want to observe behavior. And remember, everybody, this is a extremely dangerous trade. And it's only it is not for, shall we say, the meek and weak of heart. But it's really more. Uh, the reason I mentioned it in my uh, video and the talk about it is it's the behavior retail trader behavior so let's watch we see exhaustion here in this chop uh the mid is above us we can get up to the mid stops are there we want to see now if we get large iceberg behavior the i the, the concept behind this was if retail the weak hands are getting squeezed and are covering then who takes the other side if you're if this is the counter attack and you want to unload where would you be doing it? Let's watch. You want to watch the book? We want to watch if there if icebergs start firing. We're watching closely. I don't see icebergs. I want to see bigger players. So I this is a keep your powder dry and watch. Remember, we anticipated this, what, an hour and a half ago? This is part of our understanding how the market mechanics, what, how they work. And again, nothing, you know, is, is ironclad. Nothing's cast in stone. Everything is maybe. But retail trader behavior and write this down if this is new to you the only thing that we know that we might be consistent is retail trader behavior see the stops going off so let's watch we ate through that liquidity the buyers are persistent where's the icebergs we want to see I want to look for icebergs yes. Yes. where you all of a sudden you see them in there and they're filling and they're just putting the load out. That's what you want to, that's not a triggering structure. It's behavioral. Icebergs are not running with little stops like we do. So they're a different animal in a different time frame. So let's watch. See the book thickening up. Now that we're at the mid, what's at the mid? Stops. Watch the behavior. Watch the behavior. Nothing to do. We're just tourists, right? S 
and Team Vice Talk 250. Yes, short midpoint reversal. Short midpoint Thank reversal. You. Short midpoint reversal. Short midpoint reversal. Okay, watch the behavior. So we have retail trader behavior. We have yes we have yesterday's low and we have the mid aligned. Stop pop over yesterday's low and the mid and this is a potential opportunity to observe. And of course, you know, we're not recommending anything, but I don't see the iceberg behavior. So, you know, it appears to be a short, but I'm just saying maybe. And this would be the first target if it's valid. Ahead. Uh, if you're new here, something to write down is retail trader behavior, right? Where's their stops above the mid, above yesterday's low? That's alignment. This is an outside edge. Now, I'm looking for different behavior here, but this is a short. And this is your target. I had it here. Return to VWAP. Why retail trader behavior? If they're long, and somebody is, their stops are going to be here. And other traders are going to buy here. So ahead of the VWAP would be your target on a short out of here. And here's your short. Chop, 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 volume, pullback, short, scale, stop here, trail, or, and this is your target ahead of this. And if we get below there, just to make it interesting, here. Well, here, here. Okay? Yeah, thir 305, I do it every day. Yep. Uh, Monday through Friday, approximately 1030 uh, Central, 1130 Eastern, uh, till usually the RTH close. Back to the mid. Stops at the mid. So we look for a stop pick. Now we got to see the behavior right here. Again, we're against yes. this volume. And we're just tourists, right? This is still a viable trade, as you can yes. see. Yes. So this trade would be over. Didn't quite get the target. So let's observe. We're still coming to the outside edge. We still want to be looking for icebergs. Yeah. I have no problem with this. It's just one of thousands. So it's just one. I'm still looking. But I want to see. We have to be aware. We're at still at an outside edge over here. We have to be aware. And we just got to be watching. And this is real tricky. You know, because it's the close. And when you're coming into the cash close, you know, things get wild. So we just want to watch. This is still the short covering. So we had a rotation. This was okay. It would have been nice if it got here, right? That's the way it works. And again, I'm not discussing trade management. I'm just discussing structures and potential targets and behavior. That's not part of what I'm doing here. Just too complicated. That's another part of your trade plan. You have to have a process. So let's keep an eye out for these icebergs. Now this trade can go up to 3.30 Central Time. 
4.30 Eastern Standard Time, right into the close. So we just want to be aware. I'm not seeing the iceberg behavior. I'm not seeing the buyers. So I'm looking for the selling icebergs. And we're seeing the retail trader behavior, right? The squeeze. This is what we anticipated for the closing swing trade. And the thing that's really funky about it, now this is important, this is important, this is important, all this is important behavior. We can pop into this too. 3,900 has liquidity resting, 320 contracts. So let's, low volume, let's watch. And if, you know, remember, if this thing doesn't uh, show up, it doesn't matter. But it is a specialty. So anyway, I hope you're finding this useful. Yes, short if you found this helpful, uh, watch the behavior. See the divergence. It's not a recommendation. Uh, uh, give a thumbs up in the YouTube, please. This is a counter rotation here. There's the book. See the liquidity. Now, I, this is not, again, we're not doing anything other than being tourists. See the change in the behavior. See the high volume right here. This is just an example of behavior. It's nothing more. This is a potential opportunity for a rotation and maybe nothing more. Right? We still can blow right up into here. Remember, naked volume point of control from below is an area to check. This is the low volume outside edge of the distribution. Still, it's still mean reversion. It's just we have the issue of retail short covering. This is only 15 stops versus all these other large stops you see coming up. That's what I call divergence uh, based on retail behavior. This might be done. I don't know. That's why it's a short. Don't know. You got to scale. Then again, who knows? If it works, we get back here. If not, you get taken out. That's traded. Need to be okay with that. It's not indifference. It's just acceptance of overhead and the, and the randomness of these rotations. Again, we're back to this. And the mid, actually. The mid is the first one ahead of the mid, then this one, and then, you know, Hail Mary Pass. VPOC. Again, no idea. If you got on this trade, you would have a scale, right? You're risk neutral. Now, again, this is the same trade, by the way. I want to show you. This to here, this is the same trade. It's just from a, a different location. First target, mid. It's under here, the mid. And then under this swing, which aligns with ahead of the VWAP. So let's see if this one works. And now, now I'm showing you guys locations, structure, triggers, and potential targets. In between that is trade management. And that's a real individual thing. VAL is value area low. This was uh, left behind from yesterday. It was the lower edge of balance. It's important. We tested it. That's, uh, and I'll explain. Actually, if you go online and read about volume and market profile, they'll talk about value areas. It's much easier if you just go to Wikipedia, you know. It'll be more thorough. So this is, again, this is our first target. Our first target. So we have scale, mid, then VWAP, and then, and this is what you call you know, the long ball. Where is it? Back to 50, LVN, outside edge, and potential down to the VPOC, which I have no idea. But this. This is your primary objectives in this trade, which which is still okay, right? You guys aren't mad at me for this one, right? Yes, thank you. 
we have to look out for the cash close. It can be explosive, probably to the upside, and then we see what happens. So this is just one trade of thousands, right? Just one. And it doesn't matter, does it? What matters here is anticipating behavior, locations, alignment, risk management, which is, you know, scaling, and then trade management. Targets. Remember, mid was the first target, which is right here. And where do we go? Mid. See? Why, by the way, you're going to ask me? Two reasons. Stops under the mid and potential buyers at the mid. So retail trader behavior. There's probably somebody getting long at the mid. Well, okay. So I anticipate that behavior, which is why it's a target. Does that make sense? Observe the return to the value area low and the low volume node. Let's observe the behavior. Again, I have no clue. Watch the behavior though. Observe the high volume node here, which is created from back here. See? So let's watch. Nothing to do. Tourist. like to see the book thicken up above and start moving down that would be useful if you're short as opposed to pulling so let's see observe the high volume node okay done with that high volume node Let's keep an eye out for our icebergs. So this trade did its primary job. It got to the mid, right? Then the VWAP. Then here. I always, you know, the primary target is where I kind of measure. And it's my targets are a function of the auction and retail trader behavior. So, nothing to do. Got to watch this area here and this. Right now, there's nothing to do. We are going to watch for the closing uh, trade if we see it. And it can come at any time or not at all. I'm still not seeing the icebergs. And it's... See the algo? So, for me, there's nothing to do. This is vulnerable here. So we've got to watch this edge. See the behavior. Watch this behavior in the book. This is Algo. See him? See how this guy, what this guy's doing here? He was pushing it down. Now, now that that obstacle is removed, it can move up. Now let's see what happens from here. Because what these guys will do is they can push it down to buy at a better price, then remove it, and it's like taking the lid off a pot. Now what do these guys do? Do they come up under it to push it up into here? You see, anything, I mean, I can't tell you what they're doing, but I can say is that, you know, this is thickening up down here, right? Do they want to buy? Are they going to pull? Now, I have no idea, you know, so. So let's observe this behavior.
So we might, I don't know if we're going to have our closing swing trade. And again, that yes, doesn't really matter. Cash close can be very violent, especially today. You know, MOC orders, all that kind of stuff. So. That liquidity down around 80, 82, 85 is pretty interesting, isn't it? See how it all, you know this is the same guy. Look at this. Now pulling. See it? Opening the door. So that was just nonsense. So this door is now open for the market to potentially go lower. It's not a recommendation, naturally. It doesn't mean the market will go lower. But I would suggest that the potential certainly exists, right? Huh. Hope you guys are getting some out of this. Um, you know, this is just one of those, this is just another day in the jungle, you know. <laughs> and this is what I do every day, and this is what we do in the Trader Lab. The idea is to try to observe market phenomena uh, and try to read the behavior of the participants. That's the basis of auction market theory and volume profile, is to try to slice and dice it, uh, and then subject to the time frame you want to align with, uh, participate. So let's look what we got here. Here's your volume right there. This is your pullback. That's a potential short, but this is, you know, not these are nothing more than just rotations, right? Can you trade rotations? If it's in your plan, maybe, you know. It may, this kind of thing makes for a lot of trading. Um, so now this is where you have to decide what rotation are you okay with five six ten point rotations i'm pretty good with that and then where where's your patience do you wait for outside edges you say that's the other side of this so let's watch our behavior in here now we've got five minutes so it could get real nutty now all right so let's just uh we'll just watch it okay Observe the structures. Just watch structures. This is a multiple, this is fractal. In other words, higher time frame structures. Got to remember, stops are sitting up here, by the way. And in this area, all this here is a key location. We could just blast up here on the close, and then you want to see behavior. And again, guys, please don't, uh, you know, initiate any activity because this is uh, extremely risky. Uh, environment and especially in at this time of day so we got five minutes for the cash close good bad glad you like it watch the behavior now these structures are not strong structures you know you get a big buyer in here or a big iceberg covering or something it's like this isn't here so you got to remember that too these are micro okay let's watch these ice this is nothing we want to see thousands what do they say there's a whiff of iceberg in the air If this is helpful, by the way, in YouTube, please click the uh, like button before you head out. Also, please watch the uh, YouTube video. It's in the chat or down below. Also, my Twitter account if you want to download examples of uh, market phenomena that you might uh, find interesting. That's also up in the chat in YouTube there. You can find all that. So let's watch. Put your helmet on. Cash close is really wild. The closing swing trade potentially can happen up until 
3.30 ish central time so just be aware of that stops are sitting here so we want to there could be a spike up in here so we're going to watch that okay one way to learn is to observe not to do but to observe I see the icebergs, but they're nothing. That is insignificant. That's like a hobbyist. We want to see thousands. And we'll see if we do. Because the idea behind the closing swing trade is that retail weak hands are getting out. And the strong hand, they, these buying will... They'll take the other side. The icebergs might take the other side of the trade. There are stops above the IBL, 3,900. So we want to see what happens up here. Again, this is really so you guys can kind of think like a retail trader, not act like one, and anticipate where the opposite behavior might show up. And again, nobody knows what's going to happen, especially me. Because nobody does know. Okay, let's watch. We got one minute till cash close. Fifteen second delay in YouTube. There's the IB and thirty nine hundred. Watch the behavior. See how the algo pushed it down and now pulled and how the behavior and the reaction? Okay, watch out now. Okay, you got to watch the IB here. And again, we're touring. I'm not seeing the icebergs yet. So far, I haven't seen the behavior. I've seen the buying, right? We got the we got the squeeze going. That's working. We're back inside the initial balance. That is something to keep in mind. We're inside yesterday's value area. We are still looking for icebergs to take the other side, potentially. And if we don't see them, then there's nothing to think about, really.
Do I use CBD? Um, no. It's ancillary to me because all, all it is is Delta. And um, I can see the buying in here. This is, these are, this is Delta, these green and reds. I'm looking more for behavior and locations. So it's not, for me, it's not a key element. I'm not seeing the icebergs, so at least not at the moment. So I don't have anything on this. So doesn't matter. I mean, this could be a short here, actually, but it's not in my plan at this time. Because I want to see strong hands, at least this is my plan. I'm not saying this should be anybody else's. If this was regular RTH, uh, I would be short. But that's not what I'm looking for. Just me, again. This is why you got to have your own trade plan, right? I'm just isolating one specific behavior for us which is uh, the short squeeze, which is what we have, short covering. We have that element. We don't have the other side of it yet, and that could come any time. It could still come. So there's really nothing here for me. Yeah, Stock Lounge. Um, Uh, silence the MBO. Uh, you got to, I think the data, the data is separate. Everybody in YouTube, thanks for being here. Thanks for visiting. If you found this helpful, please, uh, give a thumbs up before you head out. Okay. Um, thanks. Yeah, you too, Ricky. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All you YouTubers, thanks. If you got uh, trading buddies, uh, as long as I'm still doing this, uh, you know, invite them to join. It's open to everybody. Thanks, P Trader. I appreciate that compliment. You're all welcome. Watch the video, guys, if you haven't. Uh, <clears throat> the link is up in the chat. And um, also my YouTube at Tom B underscore trades. You can download all kinds of nice little uh, tchotchkes that you'll find useful. Um, please do it. It'll make everything you see me doing here much more uh, understandable It'll, it's really a time saver for you and for me too so I can concentrate and focus on the microstructures which are triggering structures yeah Greg you're welcome Peter missing the first hour what are you missing Peter my address you want to come visit take me to dinner <laughs> Mike, uh, the address, the Twitter is at. It's in the. It's if you scroll up, it's up in the chat here. This is the uh, the link for my video. Watch it this weekend. It won't. This this stream does not stay. It is. It's gone at the end of the day. So these streams are not available. So grab the link that I just posted. That'll take you to my video that is on YouTube, which will give you a foundation and understanding of terminology, behavior, a lot. It'll be the best hour you spend. 
as opposed to spending a year maybe trying to learn market profile and all that it'll it'll be a quick uh quick start kind of yeah john everybody thank you peter bert appreciate it jim we had a wild week you know so a lot to see this week we had trend day we have this we had neutral day yesterday mean reversion so we have a lot of material by the way those of you in youtube i do a replay uh once a month we pick a day that has a lot of structure and triggering mechanisms in them uh and we do a replay on a Saturday morning, you know, 10 a Eastern Standard Time, where we're not distracted, uh, you know, trying to trade and watch and everything else. And so we can concentrate, you know, so it's for education, right? So, and you guys know this is kind of a short, but it's not my trade now. Never got those icebergs. Maybe they're exhausted. Well, Cat in the Hat, thank you. I haven't seen you for a while. Thanks for saying that. It really means a lot. Thanks for that. Yeah, Tacky, thank you for being here, too, for hanging in there. And all of you in uh, YouTube, I know this is new to you guys, uh, and I understand, and, and, and if you don't get it, and it's just a bit mind-boggling, uh, allow that, please, because uh, you're going to get this in a few months it took me years so I think it's a good you know um, it's a good use of your time even if you never use this process you'll have a whole different view of how the market functions I think thanks Alpha seeking Tapish where are you I, I don't um, Yeah, Joseph, my pleasure. Well, Trader Tay for the icebergs uh, for the uh, to take the closing swing trade. You know, I like to see. 900, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, you know, like the massive uh, taking the other side. It's kind of the idea of the uh, this squeeze, this behavior up is for the big money, call it the strong hands, to take the other side. That's what I look for. And then you can get a substantial move. If you watch my video that I did the um, which is I caught you know from December 14th of 2020 um, I show that behavior in that video and I uh, I detail it out so you can kind of see it um, we didn't get it today we got part of it we got the cover see so that's part of the market mechanics you know when you think about behavior if everyone stops and thinks about retail trader behavior you really got as we say a leg up on the competition you can anticipate what they do. Remember, what you do or did, your inclination, your motivation, your fear, and kind of the group behavior, you know? So if we can anticipate the behavior based on our impulses, but change our behavior, we can then use that collective behavior as an asset. And it's the only thing I think that is consistent in a random process like the market. This was a short, but again, you know, neither here nor there. You're on YouTube, YouTube, Tapish. I'm not quite sure what that means. Yeah, Eric, uh, thank you. Uh, be sure to watch the video. It's pinned to the top of the text channel in Discord, the Trader Lab text channel, and there's handouts, you know, kind of like a little party gift, you know. You know, they give you a little bat, little thing with a couple cookies in it. We got those up there for you. And you guys in YouTube, uh, my Twitter, at Tom B underscore trades. That will, you can download all kinds of uh, illustrations that I did, screenshots. And it's definitely worth your time this weekend. 
if you want to catch up get more out of this you kind of need to do that just a matter of how you want to spend your time I want to see you guys spend your time um, and start to dance with the market and start to read it that's my objective that's why I do this because if it kind of you kind of see something and you go hey that's interesting this I believe will separate you from what the masses are doing and we know how it turns out for them so maybe there's maybe a different plan or at least a different viewpoint or way to integrate this behavior into what you're currently doing you know might help you get closer to whatever your goals are trader I gotta go take a look at it there's yeah there's artifacts left behind What's a fu furu? F U R U? Alpha? Fu F U R U? Oh, f is that like gurus or furus? It was a great week for trading, wasn't it, guys? I mean, we had so many opportunities. Now, I realized that my broker, um, you know, I get gift baskets. And at the end of the month, I go down and make his yacht payment, but that's okay. Oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Furu, that's interesting. No replay tomorrow. It'll um, uh, slot the replays like once, uh, once a month. So somewhere in June is the next one. Um, you know, because when I do the replay, it's a full four hours or so, and it's basically like a work day for me. You might say on the Saturday, um, and uh, I also am available to interact. Um, you know, if there's questions. Um, so, you know, once a month right now because I need, I need my, uh, you know, you do this all week. And I got to tell you, not only streaming, but trading, uh, you know, there's a little bit of drool running down my chin by uh, Friday. <laughs> uh, there's no value area P trader because uh, it's trend configuration. So value is not valid. Um, but I'm going to have to look at it. You know, I kind of, after a day like today, I'm just sort of not going to look at it for a little while. Um, I just need to get away, you know, kind of, if that makes any sense. So I, I, you know, I look at it, uh, over the weekend probably. And I'd be doing re, I'm going to, but so you know what my weekend plan is? Replay. So I would I would hope you guys your weekend plan if you haven't watched the video you watch it and if you want to and here's the other thing about this when you watch the video you're going to see some things that'll be interesting to you when you watch it a second or third time you see more so it's not a one and done remember this is about making a career in trading not a hobby and you're not just passing through you know like yeah I did that no if you if it's about trying to do something different and not be a statistic and I'm telling you trading is not easy but you can make it simple uh, I hope that's useful thanks again for being here everybody I'm gonna uh, cut the cord <laughs> trip over the cord at the CME maybe um, Have a super week and thanks so much everyone for being here this week and being supportive, being part of the Trader Lab. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, if you have questions uh, in the Discord chat, please post them in the Trader Lab chat uh, as opposed to direct messaging me. I get too many. I can't handle it. And a lot of the questions are the same. So.
You're welcome, Matt. Thank you for your appreciation and your and, and all of you for your support. Uh, it is uh, gas in the tank for me. Thank you, Nick. Okay, Bat. Thanks. Do homework. Uh, bull flag. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I, yes. And it's strictly for the education because th this is a generic process. It works stocks, anything, options, anything, ETFs, any market that has liquidity. It works. It's because this represents auction. This represents how markets work. Um, so it applies to any market. The only thing the market needs to have is somebody participating in it. More than you know, four participants. It's got to have depth to it, uh, so you can kind of see what's going on, you know, with the market makers and the rest of it. Otherwise, uh, it works across everything. You want to trade corn? Not you can do it. <laughs> you know, you want to trade bean meal, bean oil, you can do it. It's all the same. Global Plus, and I only trade futures, but it's all the same, Sam. I'm telling you, you want to trade equities, you, you pull up an equity chart, um, you'll see the same thing. Other than the uh, stops and icebergs, that's not available in equities. The uh, stop and icebergs are only available with rhythmic data at the CME, uh, so for futures, and only CME at this point, um, you know. But you don't need that for trading stocks. Stocks are really... But it's the same. Go to the Bookmap website, and what you'll see up there is all the answers to your questions about. I mean, you can trade crypto with this process. You could trade everything; it doesn't matter. You know, so choose your, you know, whatever your favorite, um, you know, market is that you are mentally aligned with. And it's also a function of time frame. You can trade any time frame using the same process. I, what I do is I'm trading higher time frame, but I'm trading inside it. That's all. That's all I'm doing. I'm just trading inside. And for me, it's a function of the risk management because I want tight risk management. And then I'm going for this. And because of futures and the leverage in futures, you know, something like an eight points, one kind, one lot in a uh, ES mini, you know, this would be roughly $400 on a one lot. You know, I'm just saying, so I don't need, you know, to try to hit the long ball, but I do. But I'm trading inside that long ball. So the rotations inside it are still workable for me. So I can trade in it, you know. So, But that's all I'm doing, really. But it's all the same. It's, as I say, it's fractal. So thanks again, everybody. And I hope that answered your question. Uh... Sam. Please watch that video this weekend if you haven't. Um, download the information, the examples, the samples of structured setups. Everybody wants a setup. Well, you know, there is no such thing really other than potential behavior in locations where you might interact then you need triggering mechanisms so it's a really a matter of pieces so there's a lot of pieces available you got to do the work and educate yourself and find the rhythm that fits for you you know for me the rhythm that fits for me is like this you know this could be a short for me i mean in, <laughs> if we weren't closing but you know what i'm saying right notice the volume notice where we came back it, to me, it's very clear, but that's just me. So again, thank you, be well, and be safe, and thanks for being here.